now tuned into the best, best Stuck house of consciousness On Black News 102 two. You can't front, you know you grew Sign at the studio studio. It's for them that truly know Sign at the TV too to Bring a real talk to me and you To the house of consciousness. You will open your third eye tonight. Your third eye tonight. Subscribe to the house of consciousness.
Peace and Pan-Africanisms to Brother Herman Smalls in the toughest environment you can be in. This is the toughest environment to be in, and we're busting piñatas. All right, families, it was a powerful emergency for our brother Jabari. If only y'all know, man, Jabari is a real soldier, a trooper, and there are some things that come before in real life. Let me make sure he got the link. I just got off the damn phone with him. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, here you go. Here you go. <clears throat> um, Some things are just more important than just jumping on. Jabari is dealing with real life issues. Um, you don't need to hear the name of the an individual, but um, the brother had to take care of something real serious. That's why he's late. All right. And I bring to you our brother, Brother Jabari. What's happening, bro? Dear brother. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I mean, I understand, brother. I'm glad you had to take care of that. Uh... Is everything all right, though? Um, I hope so. I mean, yeah. I, I think that's the best way I could phrase it is I hope so. You want to let the people know what you were dealing with? You ain't got to say the name or nothing? Just let the oh, people know. I, I certainly wouldn't say the name, but I have a, a, I had a student who um, was in great crisis and um, confided in me that they had considered hurting themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I really had to figure out, well, what do I do now? I, I have training. Um, I used to work at the domestic violence hotline and other places. And so I have training, but I really had to assess whether um, I was the right person to be handling this. But um, the person did not want me to forward them to anyone, to to connect them with anyone else. So it was a, a, a really interesting um, discussion. I was finally able to get them to um to agree to counseling and to call me a little bit later so that I'm able to um assist in any way that I possibly can. But that's Good. that's that's what happened. So I have to really apologize to the family. I know that you have been waiting for me for an hour and 40 minutes. Um and I really uh want to thank you for for hanging in there. Um, I know that it's very late. So um without further ado, I, I do want you to know that my plan is to um, do the presentation. Unless, Sonetta, do you think it's we're still good to do the presentation? Man, we're good, brother. The people have been waiting all this time. I can't stop them now. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I'd be crying about the lateness of it, but hey, yeah. some things happen, man. You know, yeah. that to attend to that was very important, more important. Oh, my goodness. So mm -hmm. I, I I had to deal with something that was, that was, that was crazy. I don't know how else to describe it. So, um, that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. That's what happened. Um, thanks for waiting. Uh, hopefully, we'll still have enough a, a good number of people in here. I'm hoping that we do. Well, we got 546 right now. They'll be coming in. They just were thinking you ain't showing up. Good. But good. You, go ahead. The topic of this discussion or this um joint will be refuting Chief X. Was ancient Egypt as Kemet Black? I'm passing you the mic, brother. Yes, yes. And I want to make sure that um, as we as we talk about this important topic, we're at a place where um, we're able to recognize that uh, regardless of what is said, Chief X is someone who I respect, right? I, I, I actually have respect for him. Um, we've had our tussles in the past, but I certainly have respect for him. This is not going to be a situation where I'm going to be disrespectful at all. But I, I think we have to hear that Chief X is just wrong. And I think that he has taken several things and conflated them. And um, that can be very damaging. So what I want to do is I want to tell you that this is likely not going to be, this, this may simply be part one of this discussion, right? Because while I'll be dealing with Chief X tonight, I do intend to spend more time um, talking about the Africanity of ancient Kemet. Um, and I also want you to know that there are um, uh, really respected folks on this channel that have done an excellent job on talking about um, 
Reggie Mabry. I'm talking about Smash Rockwell. Rock, Rockwell. Um, they are equipped to deal with this topic. I, I'm, I'm hoping that the things that I'm going to talk about tonight will really simply be adding to the dialogue. There's some things that I will say that you probably have not heard from them. I'm tr I've tried really to include things that primarily are things that you haven't heard from them so that this is interesting for you as well. So that's that's my plan. Okay, let's get it in. And, and, and I want you to know that I would be surprised if this does not become some form of debate. Um, I think that it'll be very interesting if it becomes a debate. Um, I'm looking forward to um, a greater conversation around these topics, but I, you gotta hear folks, you can't just do a, a little Google search and assume that you can contend with these issues. You cannot do that. You have to read broadly. You have to analyze what has been um, put forward by a variety of scholars. That's the only way that you'll be able to really understand this. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'm gonna share my screen. Here we go. Also share system audio. I'm hoping that this means that you'll be able to hear video as well. Um, so please, uh, Sanetta, you can go ahead and share this. Was ancient Kemet black refuting chief X in the anti-Kemet camp? What do I mean anti-Kemet camp? There have been a large number of people, well, maybe not a large number of people, but several significant people in our community that are now trying to argue that ancient Kemet isn't Black. And uh, it's a really, really interesting um, challenge that we have tonight um, because some of those folks are folks that were arguing for the African origin of Kemet for many years. And now they've done everything to tuck tail and run in the other direction. And as doing that, they are, they are actually arguing directly and indirectly that scholars like Yosef Benyakinen, Dr. Yosef Benyakinen, Dr. Ben, Dr. John Henry Clark, Asa Hilliard, and even Renoko Rashidi, and even elder scholars like um, uh, uh, definitely Ashra Kwesi and others, are just wrong. They're saying that Sheikh Anta Giyap is pseudo. And I wanna say to you that the people that I've mentioned are scholars who these individuals, they can't even hold their wallet. And so that is the, the situation here. Um, we're definitely going to um, uh, uh, address these issues and, and we'll work from there. I see 919NC says, Jabari thinks he's always right about everything. Um, I, I don't even know how you could possibly argue that. I mean, I've certainly not said I'm right about everything, but brother, based on what you just said, everything you said I'm right about and you're wrong. How about that? <laughs> how about that? <laughs> Since you want to troll a little bit here. The reality is no one is right about everything, including me. But these are topics that I have studied extensively. So let's get it in. First of all, let me say, here are the major points of Chief X's erroneous argument. First, he's saying the ancient Kemetic people were not black. The ancient Kemetic people are the same ethnic racial stock as modern Egyptians. And the idea that ancient Kemet is not black is proved by the fact that they have had disagreements, battles, struggles, wars with the Nubians. Those are his major arguments. I'm going to refute all of them and give you much more information. You might have even noticed that when I came on after he was speaking, I even um, showed 
I showed him an image and asked him if he was aware, if he had, was familiar with the image, and he had to say no. Chief X is ill-equipped for this dialogue. There's just so much that he just doesn't know. And part of what he's doing, and we've heard other people say this as well, part of what he's doing is he believes that we should focus on West Africa. Well, family, I am saying to you that we can focus on all of Africa. That we could actually focus on the region of Africa where our ancestors most recently came from. And we could also focus on the what are sometimes called the classical African civilizations. So we are, are, are able to walk and chew gum at the same time. That's what we need to do. And as someone who is a chief in Ghana, as someone who is building a house in Ghana, as someone who spends a considerable amount of time in Ghana, as someone who's sitting to you wearing bogola on a mud cloth, how can any of these individuals question us about West Africa? How can they, as they call us Egyptomaniacs? That's ridiculous. And I know that um, Chief X says, Chief X actually did go to Ghana. He's been, in, been to Ghana and that's wonderful. But he's been to Ghana once. I've been to Ghana many, many, many times. I am not saying that we should discard our West African heritage for the Kemetic people. No one is making that argument. In fact, the argument that you'll often hear us make is that there is cultural contiguity on the continent of Africa, that Kemet is not just a, a nation unto itself that Kemet is the flowering of civilization, of African civilization, but that it was the byproduct, the product of civilizations to its south. This is the argument that we will make. Let's look. I want you to listen to Chief X as he tells you what his major arguments are. Take a listen. And let your foolish pride let, let the police, police go and say, and say you, you know, know what? I didn't, I didn't know, know that. Thank you, Thank Chief, you Chief X. Right? Right. So, <clears throat> why am I doing this and why am I on this subject? Chief I hear it, but when you play the video, you got to put yourself on mute, Jabari. Okay. okay. That's you start it over. I'm going to put you on mute. Sounds good. That's what we'll do. And, and let, let your, your foolish pride, pride let, let the belief go and say, you know what? I didn't know that. Thank you, Chief X. Right? So <clears throat> why am I doing this and why am I on this subject? Chief X got tattoos of comedic artwork all on my sleeves. When I came into the movement in 1992 and then started following Ashwa Kwesi in 1995, because Ashwa Kwesi used to live in L.A. He lived in Dallas now, but Ashwa Kwesi used to live in L.A. And this is where I met him and attended all his lectures. And this is where I got caught up in what I called myself at the time, an Egyptomaniac. So I used to be where you guys are at. So I'm not going against you. I'm just, I've learned something new and I'd like to share it. And I've changed in my thinking. I've changed the belief I used to have. So I'm here to do this presentation and prove that Egypt was not a land or a country of black folk. Negroid mm. folk, Ooh. whatever you want to term it, because now when I put on when I when I made the video Black Egypt to debunk three years ago, people start acting like they don't know what black folk is. Sinetta is a black man. I'm a black man. In America, when they say Black History Month, you know who they're talking about. You know what those people in the cotton fields of America look like. Black folk. So let's not play around with terms, okay? I know black is a social construct. I get it. But guess what? We're on social media talking about a social construct in societies. Everything is not always uh, a science topic, right? Sometimes we're just talking about population and 
a, a, a who who what kind of people are when someone shoots up a school. The first thing people want to know in America, was he black or was he white? That's the first thing people want to know. They say, oh, he was white. He's, oh, okay. He was black. Oh, okay. You know who black folk is. So let's just get on off that. So I'm ready to go ahead and share. Oh, I made this because I want to bring our people back to West Central Africa. We need to talk about West Central Africa and where we come from. We are not Egyptians. We're not descendants of Egyptians. Our ancestors aren't Egyptians. Egyptians, Berbers, North Africans, people from the Near East, Arabs, are considered Caucasian in forensic science and in physical anthropology. I didn't say white. I'm not referring to Germans in England and in, in Irish people and in, 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 in Portuguese and in, in French. I'm not talking about them people. When I say Caucasoid or Caucasian, there's people in the Caucasus. Berbers are Caucasoid people. Okay? So I just want to make these distinctions. So, and I'm ready to go in. Are you ready for me, Sa? I'm ready. Oh, unmute yourself when you're talking. Sorry about that. I wanted you to hear his argument from him. I didn't want you to think I was putting words in the brother's mouth. He's telling you precisely what he thinks. And, you know, I, I take issue with the term Egyptomaniac. I take issue with it. And some of you have seen me do this before. I'm going to do it again. Sonnetter, what building is this? Do you know? If you don't know, it's okay. You ain't study Greek history. <laughs> this building is called the Parthenon, and it's in Greece. This is the Parthenon in Greece. It's an important site, and I want you to... Take a look, take a mental snapshot of this image when we do this. Here's a, an, an image of the Parthenon. This is from the other side. What building is this? Do you see the similarity? This is the Indiana State House pro, um, that was built. Um, I, know you, I know you're focusing on Chief X, Jabari, but I want to let you know that you are not only killing Chief X, you are killing Unk and all of them um, dudes that be over there. You know, yeah. all of them following Unk now. I so, got it. I right. got it. I want to, and, and I'm going to deal with Unk specifically as well. I wish I had time to pull the video, but you'll see what I mean. All right. It, this is this is the um, the county courthouse. In Virginia, not the county courthouse. This is the, the main um, uh, state building in Virginia, in Richmond, Virginia. Do you see the similarity in these buildings? What building is this? This is the capital of the United States. Do you see that they are all based on the Parthenon? What mm -hmm. is this? This is the Federal Hall, one of the uh, meeting places of the quote unquote founding fathers uh -huh. right here in New York. I know where you're going. We see where you're going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It is the um Razmov Ravmovsky mansion in Russia. A stylized version of the same thing, the Lincoln Memorial, Monticello, the mansion of Thomas Jefferson. This is also in Russia. What is the name of this building? This is the Mosk, this is the building for Moscow University. Moscow University. This mm. is the Nashville um, uh, 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 Parthenon in Nashville, Tennessee. The Natural Portrait Gallery in Washington, D.C. The Second Bank of the United States in Philadelphia. The United States Supreme Court. The White House. What am I trying to say to you, family? 
Why is it then when Africans point to their most influential civilizations, we are told by the misguided among us, mm, mm, mm. the confused among us, that we are maniacs. Well, you should go ahead and tell that to those people who built Western buildings, modern Western buildings in the United States and all over the West. Because when they point to Greece, these people aren't, they're not from Greece. They're not Greeks. They're not Macedonians. They're simply um, people of Western descent, of European descent. And they are connecting themselves to Greece. I could do, I could do that for a half hour. You probably have buildings that look just like it in your city, wherever you are. But when Africans look at their classical African civilizations, now all of a sudden, there's something wrong with us. By the way, I travel in West Africa. And those people who are continental Africans living in West Africa also say we should focus. We should re- um, reclaim ancient Kemet and ancient Kush. That's what they say. That's what they say. So I refuse to allow these few people who have been led astray to confuse us. Let's continue. By the way, why is Chief X using the dated false propagandistic term Caucasian? You notice he said, when he's talking about people of European descent, he said, they're the Caucasians. Why is he doing that? When you hear someone use a term like that, it actually means that he has done little to no scholarly study. Let me say this to you. There is no Caucasian. The Caucasian does not exist. The term was developed by this person, this scholar. Please note my air quotes. Johann Friedrich Blumenbach in the late 18th century. He was an influential German naturalist, botanist, and anthropologist, and he wrote a work called The Natural Varieties of Humankind in 1775. Notice that um, because this means that it also influences the United States. That's what we're going to do. Chance that this don't prove people was black. Brother, you have to stay tuned. Instead of typing, listen. Take notes instead of typing because you're embarrassing yourself. Um, I want you to also note that Johann Friedrich Blumenbach was a student. He was inspired by another scholar, Carl Linnaeus. We're not going to talk about Linnaeus tonight, but he continued Linnaeus's work on the classifications of race. He is the one that develops the, develops the term Caucasian because he owns dozens of skulls, supposedly from people from around the world. And he looks at a skull from a woman from the, from the country of Georgia, not the state of Georgia, the country of Georgia, which is used to be part of the former Soviet Union. And he thinks that the skull is so symmetrical in his estimation that it proves that the European is the original man. And then he argues that the rest of the world's quote unquote races devolved from the European. Here's a quote. I have allotted the first place to the Caucasian, which makes me esteem it the primeval one, the primeval one. This diverges in both directions in two most remote and very different from each other. On the one side, namely into the Ethiopian, he's talking about Africans, 
and on the other into the Mongolian, he's talking about Asians. The remaining two occupy the intermediate positions between the primeval one and the two extreme varieties. That is the American between the Caucasian and the Mongolian and the Malay between the same Caucasian and Ethiopian. This is where this phrase comes from. When you use the word Caucasian, and I know y'all use it because you think you're being polite, you are simply saying, European, you are the original man. I bow to you. I'm a poor copy of you. We should expunge this term from our language immediately. There is no Caucasian. The European also draws lineage from Africa, not the Caucasus Mountains. That's where they come from. They've simply been away from the African continent long enough that their phenotype has changed. But it seems that Chief X is unaware of that. He needs to do more work. He needs to do more work. Chief always said it was a North African civilization. No, he did not. I just played you the quote. I just played you. You, list, you didn't listen carefully. Let's continue. By the way, these drawings are from um, uh, 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 Johann Friedrich Blumenbach's work. And you can see that he compares the same person that develops the word Caucasian. He compares the quote unquote Negro to the orangutan. This is supposed to be the orangutan here. Look at his spelling, Oran Utang. And he makes a, a contrast with that this individual here who he calls the European. Can you see this dusky face in the background here? He's trying to say that the angle of the nose and jaw are similar to the orangutan. This is where we got this title, this, this term. That's where he got it from. And you can see here that he has the Caucasian here and then these other skulls, supposedly, of other quote-unquote races, and he has them devolve from the European. Let's continue. So, the argument that he makes is that the Kemetic people are the same ethnic racial group as modern Egyptians. That's the argument he makes. On the left, you see a documentary image of a, of a recent documentary where they depicted Imhotep as a man that we would probably call Arab today. And on the right, we see a really ridiculous model of Tutankhamen, which was put forward by the Egyptian government. We're not going to critique the model of Tutankhamen, King Tut, today. We're not going to do that today. That will be for another day. But I want you to recognize that this is the argument that many in the, the Western world are attempting to make now. And they're only making it now because their argument that Cleopatra was a, a, a woman of European descent is, um, is, is now considered ridiculous. We're going to refute this too. We're going to refute this too. And let me say this very quickly. I want you to know that I am not saying that there's a particular period in time when all of those people who are were of African stock, of Black African stock in Kemet, just left. And then all of the people that we would consider Arabic came in. But essentially, what you're what we should actually acknowledge is that. Um, when Kemet fell, we see large numbers of people, foreign peoples come into Kemet. And some of them intermarried with some of the people that were there. There were people who left, but I'm not arguing that every African, every Black African in Kemet simply left. That's not what we're talking about. Shesmu Patah Aman says, which Cleopatra? I'm referring to Cleopatra the Seven. Let's continue. Huh. 
15 minutes can save you 15% or more on car insurance. Yep. Everybody knows that. Well, did you know the ancient pyramids were actually a mistake? Fifteen minutes could save you. Well, you know. This Geico commercial is trying to make the same argument Chief X is. This is something that we see regularly now. But are they following the scholarship that exists today? Is this modern scholarship? I would argue that they're not looking at the, um, the, the modern scholarship. And I see Dr. Banub um, is arguing that he's trying to say that the modern people are the same as the ancient people. Dr. Banub, if you want to have a discussion about this, write on San Netter, send San Netter an email and let us have a, a discussion, a respectful discussion about these issues. Let's go. The other argument, and I'm going to refute it. Let's do it. I'm going to. The other argument that you're going to hear Chief X make is that the Kemetic people fought with the Nubians and therefore they're not Black. You're seeing here part of a cane of King Tutankhamen. And on this cane, you're going to see a Nubian bound here. Can you see that his arms are bound? He are, he's trying to make the argument that because the Kemetic people had disagreements, had battles with the Nubians, this means they can't be African. That is the simplest and most ridiculous, illogical argument. He's almost trying to say that simply because people disagree, they must be of different racial groups. Well, there's so much wrong with this argument. First of all, it, let me give you an example. This cane has two sides. Look at the quote-unquote Asiatic on the other side. He's also bound. He's also bound. This is not meant to be a racial depiction of difference. All they're doing is describing groups of people that they have access, interaction with, and they are attempting to um, uh, describe their concept that they have to be in control of the people, the nine groups of people around them. They have to be the top dog. This was a fundamental comedic concept. They're called the people of the nine bows. And I want you to recognize that several of the people in the nine bows were people we would consider Nubian or Cushitic. Why? Because most of the time that Kemet was a great nation, the Nubians weren't one nation either. When we use the term no, um, uh, uh, Nubian, it's an anachronistic term. It doesn't fit with the time. There were several groups, uh, sometimes called the people of Wawat, the people of, of Taseti, the people of Yam. There were different groups of people on the South. It really isn't till the 25th dynasty of ancient Kemet that those groups are unified and become powerful enough to actually put Kemet back into order. But for the most part, you're seeing different groups of people. That's what's happening here. That's what's happening here. The Kemetic people had agreements and collaboration with some while disagreements with others. To make this sound like this is a racial argument doesn't even follow logically. Here go some of the other people of the nine bows, by the way. So is it because they have disagreements with all of these people? Does that mean that they're none of these ethnic groups? What are you saying, Chief X? 
What are you saying? Notice that this person is bound here. This person is bound here. This person who we uh, are being lazy by calling Cushitic, but let's say he's Cushitic right now. He is, be, he is bound here. All of them are bound because the comedic people argued that they had to be in control of all of the nine people of the nine bulls in order to be the most powerful nation in the land. This is not meant to say the just because some of them are dark skinned, that means that we are not African. Chief X continually says, they had problems with white people. What is wrong with them? What's wrong with him? Let's continue. Obviously, his arg this, this must make his argument make sense, right? In the middle here, you're seeing George Washington fighting the British, the Redcoats. Well, I guess because they had a major disagreement and fight, then this means that Washington is not British, right? That's the, the logic that he's making. Well, we know Washington's family. Here's an article from the Washington Post, February 25th, 1995, George Washington's British Roots. Saulgrave Manor, the president's ancestral home, gets the royal treatment. It might be said that the relationship between Great Britain and the United States most resembles that of parent and child. In 1776, the rebellious American youngster de declared its independence from British parental authority and ran away from home from go for good. The United States grew up to become a strapping adult, while the aging mother country looked on with pride at its offspring's every achievement. That is really a propagandistic description. The reality is they had a major war and many people died. I guess that means that um, uh, George Washington must be of a different ethnic or racial stock than the British he was fighting. Chief X, your argument lacks uh, logical, logical consistency. It lacks logical consistency. We have to deal with it. By the way, Red Rain 08 says, love Jabari's mind, big fan, but I can't roll with but I can't roll with us still trying to claim Egypt or any of the comedic rituals and stuff. They done DNA tests on the mummies. Peace and love. Stay tuned, Red Reigns uh, 08. I'm going to deal with that too. Some of y'all should stop typing and just watch. <laughs> Some of y'all should stop typing and just watch. Because I'm going to deal with the DNA. I'm going to deal with it. Let's go. Now, first of all, I want us to recognize that sometimes what we do is that we are actually, we are actually conflating large periods of time. This is the briefest possible timeline of Kemet. You have the pre-dynastic era from 4300 to 3000 BCE. The old kingdom usually is given the time frame of 2675 to 2130 BCE. You have the first intermediate period, the second intermediate period. I'm sorry, the first intermediate period, the middle kingdom, the second intermediate period, the new kingdom, the third intermediate period, the late period, the Macedonian period. This is when Alexander comes. I want you to be really clear that before Alexander comes, we even had the period where the Hyksos are in Kemet for 200 years. We have the period where the Assyrians come to Kemet. We have the period where the Persians come to Kemet. Then we have the period where the Greeks come. And they're there for hundreds of years. Then the Romans, who are there for, I'd say, somewhere around uh, 700 years. Then we have the Arabs come in three in 637. They they um begin to uh take Kemet in what is always called often called either the Is Islamic invasion of Egypt or the Muslim invasion of Egypt or even the Arab invasion of Egypt. I want you to recognize that 
believing that the, the people that live there now are ethnically, racially, if we want to use that term, and phenotypically the same, that strains credulity. When we have successive waves of thousands, hundreds, let's just say hundreds for now, hundreds of years of foreign people coming into the land. By the way, when we talk about the Muslim invasion, you're going to hear some say, well, the Muslims only came with 4,000 people. That's just their army. What happens when they're in control of Kemet for hundreds of years? Are you saying that the only people that came after they, they had their conquest of Kemet, we should call it Egypt at that time, the only people that came were the soldiers? When you hear that, and you are going to hear it, I want you to tell people, you're just talking about the soldiers. I think I've heard Chief X uh, say it. Oh, goodness. Who else says that? How am I forgetting his name? It's late, Sonnetter. You're going to hear people say, remember we were going to debate him on, on um, whether Kemet was, was Black? Remember that, Kem, um, Sonnetter? Um, come on, we were on the phone together. Was it a European? No, 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 no. Someone has been on this channel many times. You, the three of us were on the, on this, on a phone call trying to set up a debate around this very topic. And he was all over the place. So I said, I can't even debate him because he's not saying anything that's coherent. <clears throat> Don't come back to me. Yeah. And you do. Come yeah. on now. You were on the phone too. This is recent. Ngozi. Thank you, Venom K. Ngozi also said it. When you hear Ngozi say they only came with 4,000 people, you should say to him, are you just counting the soldiers? So after they took over Kemet, they just stayed there? They didn't bring families? Other people didn't come in after they were in control? That's a ridiculous argument. That's a ridiculous argument. They were there for hundreds of years. Let's continue. Let's continue. What you need to say to understand is that to understand Kemet, you should be able to recognize that Kemet has four major periods in its in its formative in its powerful history. It is founded by King Namr. By the way, look at King Namr. Most people talk about Namr as the founder of Kemet, but you will rarely see his picture. Look at that. That's Namr. That's Namr. Why is it that you don't see this image? Why is it? Why is it that this image is not one that you see very often? Even though there's a documentary on ancient Kemet virtually every moment of every day, why is it that we don't see that we don't see the image of Namr? I want you to recognize that there's a problem here. In fact, I would even ask, let's see, of those of you who are doing study, where is this image? Tell me where it is. I want you to tell me where this image is. Let's see if you know. Somebody here has done enough study to be able to tell us that. Where is this image? Let us know. Um, and as you do that, I want you, this is going to be a way for us to acknowledge that we are in a situation where we have to do more study in order to truly understand these stories. More study is necessary. Okay, we'll see who um, and who acknowledges where. Um, that this head of Narmer is. How about King uh, Mentuhotep, who creates the Middle Kingdom? He is al almost always considered as a new founding father of Kemet. Yes, Jay Williams is at the William Flinders Petrie Museum in London. Good answer. That's where it is. That's where it is. 
Um, and I'm going to tell you, there's no one that argues that Mentuhotep was not a, a quote unquote black African. I don't even like the word black African, but I want you to hear the term so you're you're clear about it. When you take a tour of the Metropolitan Museum and you go to the area that has all of the models from his his um chief economic monster, um um uh chief economic um uh um um advisor, a man named Mekit Ray, you have to go behind the staircase and they acknowledge that. Even his wives are always depicted with dark skin and tightly curled hair. That's 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 how this is. And then we see the Middle Kingdom fall apart, creating the second intermediate period. And then we see King Amos and his wife and his mother and this family that comes from further into the interior. Look at the image of King Amos as the prince. Are we not talking about an African? By the way, these aren't just drawings from someone else. These are the images they created for themselves. Are we not talking about an African? This is ridiculous. Street Sufi says, he wasn't a black African. You said it right. He was a brown-skinned African from Egypt and possibly had a Sudanese North descent wife. Um, he's a brown-skinned African? Brother, uh, okay, uh, uh, okay. You're really slicing that cheese really thin. <laughs> Africa is a place that has a large number of phenotypes, right? It is a diverse place. But if we had seen almost today, we would consider him black. This, this is a this is a not, um, what we have to acknowledge. And then we see the the um, the new kingdom fall apart. And then we see briefly, we see another resurgence under the Cushitic, um, the Cushitic rulers of the 25th dynasty. These are the four critical errors of ancient Kemet. This chart is in my book. If you're looking at ancient Kemetic history, you have to look at its important periods and those individuals and peoples who led to it. Ancient Kemet is always put into its strongest phase by people who are further into the interior. From King Namur coming to the coast to create Kemet, from Mentuhotep coming from the area around Waset in Upper Kemet, from King Amos coming from the area of Waset into Upper Kemet, and from Shabaka and the Cushitic rulers coming from what we would probably call either Kemetic Kush or so literally the Sudan today. These are the four critical periods. Let's go. Let's deal with DNA for a minute. Let's deal with DNA for a minute. I think we would agree that the United States is a diverse place, right? I think that this is a diverse place. Look at this chart that comes from the um, US, the United States Census Bureau. And they're actually giving you here the diversity index. Now, I think in this instance, they're talking about peoples from other places, right? Not just Europeans. That's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. And you can see that certain places have much more diversity than others. Take a look, for example, at New York, Sonetta. That's where we are. New York has one of the, the, um, the, the darkest green um, shadings here, a diversity index of 65% or more. This is interesting. So if we were going to try to do a, a, a DNA analysis of, um, of the United States, you have to ask yourself some really important questions. Whenever you see DNA analysis, here are the questions that you must ask. First of all, many people who are talking about the DNA of mummies, they simply read the, the, um, the title of a, a popular website or paper. They never look at the paper itself. We're gonna do that tonight. 
because Saw Netter Studios, Saw Netter TV, is a community that attempts to build its scholarship. That's how you do it. You don't just read the title of something. What do you think if you just read a title of a book, you'll know what the book is? Well, we are going to look at the scholarly articles in a moment, and we're going to see whether they say what people have purported it to say. Rain, uh, Red Rains 08, this is where I want you to look at this, because you made a comment about DNA of mummies earlier. Look closely. Look closely. You're going to read the articles now. So... United States is a relatively diverse place, right? Sonetta, what's happening here? What's happening here? Any idea? Do you recognize anyone? Of course, man. <laughs> of course, my man. Um, is that Sammy Sosa? No, but he's a be he's a baseball player from the from the Red Sox. He's usually called yes, he's usually called Big Poppy. Yeah, Big Poppy, right? He's right. from the Dominican Republic. Yeah, Big Poppy. But what's going on with the rest of them? Any idea what's going on here? Why are they dressed that way? Just teach, man. Just go ahead. And teach. <laughs> go ahead, and teach, man. Listen, this is not something you should have the answer to. This is the reason why I'm silent for a moment is because I want everyone to think about this for a second. All of these folks around are members of the Boston Police Department, but you might notice their berets. You might notice their bagpipes. I want you to be clear about what you're seeing here. The Boston Police Department and many police departments in the United States, including to some degree, to some degree in, the, in New York City, have embraced the Irish traditions. You ever notice that when you're listening to the, um, the, the, the police and you're listening to the fire department and one of them dies, you hear bagpipes? They're embracing Ireland and Scotland. Why? Well, this is because those particular um, uh, 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 groupings of people have a larger number of people who are Irish. In fact, Boston is really Irish. Maybe it's becoming less Irish now. Take a look at the sign at the top. Keep Boston Irish. This is during one of their parades. By the way, these guides right here can you see the stormfront flag? These are white supremacists here. But look at the police again. And look at these patches that some police officers actually wear. Boston police, Aaron Gobra. Crime, fighting Irish is what that says. And you can actually see a four leaf clover and what is probably um, uh, 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 one of those tiny uh, uh, mythological individuals that is um, following the rainbow, a leprechaun. There's so many Irish people in Boston that I Irish culture is a big part of Boston. Here's the question. If someone were to take DNA samples from Boston in 1995 and then say to the rest of us that this is representative of the people of the United States, Sonetter, would you say, wait a minute, there's a problem with that sample? Would you say that? Yes, you would. Why? Because you're oversampling from one particular place that everyone knows is very Irish. More on this in a second. Here's an article, Boston's Immigrant Population. And it actually goes on to talk about 
the Boston Irish, the Great Famine struck in, in, in Ireland that was already struggling. A precious, oppressive English rule had crippled many of Ireland's merchants, had drawn the Irish elite to England, and had prevented Ireland from reaping the benefits of the Industrial Revolution that swept through Europe and America. The lower classes of Ireland were struggling to get by, and the potato famine devastated them. Thousands came to America between 1845 and 1850, and Boston was one of the main seaports of their landing. Many Irish immigrants barely had the means to make the trip and had no money to move on, move on once they landed in Boston. By 1950, 35,000 of Boston's 136 residents, 26%, were Irish. If you take samples from that city, it is not representative of the rest of the country. If you take samples from that city, it is not representative of the rest of the country. Where do you see Massachusetts? Here. And that's now. Would, would Massachusetts be a good way to look at the country when you can look at Texas or California or Nevada or New York? More on this, more on this. I want you to listen to one of those individuals who I guess we could really only call, wait a minute, this is not supposed to, give me one second. My uh, PowerPoint is not working properly. Let me just fix it really quickly. Um, I want you to. I want. I'm going to want you to listen to one of those individuals who could really only be considered um, a, an internet troll, and he's been known to say some things that are racist. Talk about um, this reality. Talk about. Oh, I see what went wrong. Talk about some of these studies that we see of, of mummies. First, let me do this. Let me reshare. Here are two of the articles that people look at. Here you go, Red Rains 08. This is what you're referring to. And I want to say to you, I'm not trying to say that this is your argument. You heard it like many of us did. But did you read the deeper into the study? Did you read deeper into the study? Here's one of them. Mummy DNA unravels ancestry of ancient Egyptians. And the other one, National Library of Medicine. This uh, study is called Ancient Egyptian Mummy, G Mummy Genomes Success, uh, Suggest an Increase of Sub-Saharan African Ancestry in Post-Roman Periods. Now, I want you to recognize something interesting. Did you notice? Did you notice that the title... First of all, let me tell you something interesting. You've probably heard of both of these. They're talking about the same study. The same study. But you might have heard it more than once. And look at the subtitle of the unscholarly article. And I'm going to tell you, this is actually from the journal um, uh, Nature, which is pretty much, this is a scholarly journal, but you have to read the paper itself. Look at what the subtitle says. Genetic analysis re reveals a close relationship with Middle Easterners, not Central Africans. You might actually say, wow. I guess this means that we can settle it. The modern Kemetic people, the modern Egyptian people, are the same stock of the ancient people. But did you read the article? Did you read the article? Now listen, everyone in this space is going to hear this. This is the refutation. Let's start with the journal article. No. Oh, wait a minute. Let's listen to... Um, uh, to um, Alex Jones first, talk about this same study. Listen. 
Publishing its findings in Nature Communications, the study concluded that preserved remains found at Abusir El Malik, Middle Egypt, were closest genetic relatives of the Neolithic and Bronze Age populations from the Near East and Eastern Mediterranean Europeans. DNA discovery reveals genetic history of ancient Egyptians. I'll tell you about that coming up at the start of the next hour. It's actually what the ancient Greeks said. That's what Plato said. Plato said that it was people from Central Europe or from the coastline there, uh, basically uh, some of the same tribes that came down and created uh, the, the, the Roman culture and some of those other cultures. The, they've done the DNA testing on a bunch of the most ancient mummies, and they were they were uh, Central and Southern Europeans. But, but it's not some... Did they do testing on the most ancient mummies? Continue. Let's continue. Bashing the Africans. I just always hear that civilization, you know, was stolen from Africans. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, you have to say the Chinese probably had the oldest civilization. They're not Africans. But you could argue that, that, that the humans originally originated in in Africa, though now they've got some research uh, that's not showing it. But it's not an attack on anybody. It's just what the DNA tests are showing and, and what what 2,400 years ago the first you know, global historian, Plato, said. Plato also said... No one would argue that Plato is the first global historian. <laughs> he was searching for the name Herodotus, by the way. Let's continue. We should have a world government and kill all the poor people. He's kind of the model of the globalist today. Wasn't a very nice guy, but the father of what you'd call philosophy. He was also a historian. He said there was a uh, base in the Atlantic Ocean that had flying machines. And he said they created such an energy source so powerful that it blew up their entire island and made this, the, the uh, earth dark for several years and, and made the temperature get cold. I actually had read Plato's writings on that. How would he come up with that? How, how would Plato come up with that? And he also said that it was people from the, the north of, of Greece uh, that founded it. And some of the same tribes that founded Greece, he said, founded Egypt. Of course, we know early on the first trade was between Greece and Egypt. Of course, that was always known. The Romans taught that. But see, in the modern culture, people just said, no, that's not true. Uh, Africans founded Egypt. And it is true about the middle period of Egypt. They had brought in folks from all over the Middle East and there and intermarried. And that it was true. They intermarried with kings of Ethiopia and other areas uh, and had uh, actually then no longer been European. Uh, that is true. But Egypt was started by Europeans. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen, in 70 seconds. Please stay with us. Egypt was started by Europeans. That's not even what the article says. By the way, did you notice that he was citing a CNN piece? That article was everywhere. I had trolls in my inbox. And I kept saying to them, did you read the study? Did you read the study? None of them did. They just read the title. Did you read the study? We're going to read both the Nature article and the study. Take a look. Here's, this is what the Nature article says. Mummy DNA unravels ancestry of ancient Egyptians, right? When you go into the article, this is what it says. The study published on May on 30th of May in Nature Communications includes data from 90 mummies buried between 1300, 1380 BC during Egypt's uh, New Kingdom and AD 425, the Roman era. Well, right off the bat, even when you listen to this more public article, you have to ask yourself, this span is of a thousand years. How many um, of these bodies are from the New Kingdom and how many of them are, of them are from the, the uh, Assyrian, Persian, Greek, and then Roman era? Right off the bat, even if you were just reading this article, you would have to say there's something fishy here. But that's not what CNN and Nature did. When I read this, I said, wait a minute, I have to read the article.
Continue to the rest of what they say here. The findings show that the mummy's closest kin were ancient far farmers from a region that includes present-day Israel and Jordan. Modern Egyptians, by can contrast, have inherited more of their DNA from Central Africans. I heard so many people say, don't you know that there are there's more African DNA now than there was then? Than there was during the Roman era? Gee, why? Uh, you should know that already. Let's read the scholarly article and see what they say. It even goes further. Here's the scholarly article again. Ancient Egyptian mummy genomes suggest an increase of sub-Saharan African ancestry in post-Roman periods. This is the article in the National Library of Medicine. How many of you read it? I did. Look at this. The archaeological site Abu Sir el Melek was inhabited from at least 3250 BCE until 700 CE. Do you see how much time that is? And was of great religious significance because it of its active cult to Osiris, the god of the dead, which made an attractive burial site for um, generations. Now, I want you to go further down here. Oh, no, let's read right here. Written sources indicate by the 3rd century BCE, Abu, el Abu Sir el Melek was at the center of a wider region that compromised the northern part of the, uh, the Heracleopolis province. They're already telling you something interesting here. Continue reading. And had close ties with the Fayum and the Memphite provinces involving the transport of wheat, cattle breeding, beekeeping, and quarrying. In the early Roman period, the site appears to have been the main center of its own district. Abu Sir Amelik's proximity to and close ties with the Fayum are significant in the context of, the, of this study, as the Fayum in particular saw substantial growth. Listen to this. Listen to this. Carefully. As the Fayum in particular saw a substantial growth in its population during the first hundred years of the Ptolemaic rule, presumably, presumably as a result of Greek immigration. Later in the Roman periods, many veterans of the Roman army, who at least, initially at least, were not Egyptian, but people from disparate cultural backgrounds settled in the Fayum area after the completion of their service and formed social relations and intermarried with local populations. Importantly, there's evidence for foreign influence at Abbasir and Melek. Individuals with Greek, Latin, and Hebrew names are known to have lived at the site and several coffins found at the cemetery use Greek portrait image image and adapted Greek statue types to suit quote unquote Egyptian burial practices. I want you to recognize they're already telling you that the the place where they took this from is atypical during the the most powerful and most um a uh, 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 period of dynastic Kemet. That's what this article says. Read the article, CNN. Read the article, Nature Communications. Let's continue. By comparing ancient individuals um, from, by the way, I even uh, I'm offended the fact that they're calling them ancient individuals because they're telling you what period they're pulling from. By comparing ancient individuals from Abu Sir and Melek with modern Egyptian reference po populations, we saw an influx of sub-Saharan African ancestry after the Roman period, which corroborates a finding by Han and colleagues. Further, in, listen to them tell you what the, pro the problems of their own study are. Further investigation would be needed to link the influx to particular historic processes. Possible causal factors include increased mobility down the Nile and increased long-distance commerce between Sub-Saharan Africa and Egypt. Trans-Saharan slave trade may have been particularly important as it moved between seven million, six and seven million Sub-Saharan slaves to Northern Africa over a span of some 12, 
50 years, reaching its high point in the 19th century. By the way, how dare you? They're talking about the Arabs' enslavement trade and trying to push this off like this happened during ancient Kemet. That's what they're doing. How dare you? Let's continue. However, we note that all our genetic data were obtained from a single site in Middle Egypt and may not be representative for all of ancient Egypt. It is possible that populations in the south of Egypt were more closely related to those of Nubia and had a higher sub-Saharan genetic component in which case the argument for an influx of sub-Saharan ancestries after the Roman period might only be particularly va partially valid and have to be nuanced. Throughout Pharaonic history, there was an intense interaction between Egypt and Nubia, Nubia ranging from trade to conquest and colonialism. By the way, they're already telling you that they had, uh, they had collaboration and competition ranging from, as they say, trade to conquest and colonialism. And there is compelling evidence for ethnic complexity within households with Egyptian men marrying Nubian women and vice versa. Clearly, more genetic studies on ancient human remains from southern Egypt and Sudan are needed, are needed before apodectic statements can be made. They're telling you that you should take this study not with a grain of salt, but with the entire Dead Sea. They're already telling you in their own study. Who read the study? Why don't you describe this CNN? Why don't you describe this Nature Communications? This was everywhere. This was everywhere. They're already telling you they took it from one site at a very late period. Why in the world did they give this that title? I'm telling you, you have to be a scholar. This is Sonnetter TV Studios. This is how we do, or at least this is how we're supposed to do. Don't just read the title of the article. Let's continue. Let's continue. And this is the reason why I started by trying to tell you if you took samples from Boston in 1995, would you think that it was um, uh, accurate to say that this represented the entire nine United States in 1995? How about the entire United States in 1795? How about the entire United States in 1695? How about the entire United States? In 1595, because you see what they did, they smashed a bunch of stuff together. This study is not worth the paper it's written on, not for the conclusions that the popular, um, uh, uh, um, that most people in the general community received. I've been arguing about this for ever since it was it came out in in 2017 how many of us read the study let's go let's go by the way scholars know this let's go how about this study how many of you have seen the piece from dna tribes february 1st 2000, uh, 2013 Here's another study I'm going to show you. So I want you to understand, I'm not saying that DNA is problematic. I'm saying whenever people take DNA, you have to ask from where, when, and how can you extrapolate where you got it from with the rest of the nation? Those are the questions you must ask. Some of these, if you look at the, the article that Chief X referred to, it doesn't even tell you where the, um, the sample was from. It doesn't even tell you where the sample is from. Family, do the research. Let's look at what DNA Tribe said. 
Look at this. Ramses III, an African ancestry in the 20th dynasty of the New Kingdom. In recent years, genetic data have become more available, not only for present day populations around the world, but also for ancient individuals. When ancient individuals are tested, results can illuminate the geographic links between populations during early periods and provide clues about the relationships between ancient and modern populations. Let's continue. The January 12th issue of DNA Tribes Digest included autosomal STR analysis for King Tun Anka Men and several other 18th dynasty, or Marna period, mummies. The DNA results identified alleles, alleles that today would be our most frequent to wear? Our most frequent to wear? Our most frequent to wear? sub-Saharan Africa and found in Middle, East, Middle Eastern populations at lower frequencies. This suggests a sub-Saharan sub African genetic component for the Amarna period royal family, but not, does not exclude the possibility of additional ancestral components for those ancient individuals, such as West Asian and Mediterranean components that are found in Egypt today. So I want you to understand what they are saying is those people that we call Kemetic had a large amount of Sub-Saharan African DNA and also DNA from other people in the region. This is a much more um, complex art argument. Astro87 says, DNA tribes never put their hands on one mummy, LOL. No, they didn't. They actually took the, the same studies that were done by, the, do you know that the Egyptian museum actually has a DNA lab in its basement? They took their studies. Because the figures are the figures, y'all. That's what they did. And the founder of DNA Tribes died. He died. The person that ran it died. So I want you to understand that this is important. Let's continue. To expand on those results, this month's, art month's article includes geographical analysis of autosomal STR profiles from a later pharaonic family of the 20th dynasty of ancient Egypt. Ramses III and another man, possibly his son Pentaware. Ramses III, by the way, Pentaware is the one that might have killed him. Ramses III was murdered. And Pentaware, which is not actually his name, Pentaware is likely the person who was involved in his murder. So we're not trying to say that everyone who we have DNA from is a wonderful person, but the DNA is the DNA. Let's continue. Let's continue. Ramses III reigned, they give you the period, during the transition from the Late Bronze Age to the Early Iron Age. During this period, the influence of the New Kingdom Egypt was declining and new independent cultures were emerging around Egypt's imperial frontiers. They're beginning to tell you that all people from other regions began to come in more heavily into the region. Let's continue. I'm not going to read the whole piece. And, look, and this one actually is earlier. The last of the Amarna pharaohs, King Tut and his relatives. That's what this one is. This one is from January 1st, 2012. And I want you to understand that as we look at this, as we look at the data, we're seeing some things that you don't hear unless you look at the data. The folks that are telling you these, these um, ana uh, analyses are actually not giving you the entire story. Look at this. At the, the end of the Amarna period marked the conclusion of the Tutmosid 18th dynasty of Egypt. King Tut and his relatives were to be the last descendants of one of the ancient pharaonic families, sometimes said to have ancestral link with the land of Punt, near the Horn of Africa. Archaeologists have discovered several royal mummies linked to the Amarna period. These include not only the famous mummy of King Tut, but also his mother, there's probably a lady named Kia, by the way, and relatives of Menetep III and Yuya. 
let's let's go to the next part where you actually see the genetic analysis of these mummies take a look this is really important as they do the um analyses this is what they have average ml1 scores in table one indicate the str profiles of the armarna mummies would be more frequent in present day populations of several african regions including the southern african average ml1 26 uh, 326.94 great lakes african and tropical west african regions these regions do not necessarily in indicate an exclusively African ancestry for the Marna Pharaonic family. However, the results indicate that these ancient individuals inherited some alleles from that today are more frequent in populations of Africa than in other parts of the world. Take a look at the analysis here. Take a look at it. You see Thuya, Yuya, this is probably um, Kia, Amenhotep III, Look at this. He's looking at the alleles, the M1L, the ML1, MLI, that actually gives you an understanding of how much of Southern African alleles you can find. And look at the averages. Now, he's not saying that there is no um, uh, parentage, no intermixing with people outside of Africa. But look at the amounts in Southern Africa, African Great Lakes, Tropical West African, Horn of Africa, Sahelian, all of these, one, two, three, four, five, are all on the continent of Africa. He doesn't even go down to North African. Look at this. Those are the, the, the highest averages. Family, do the research. Don't just read the title of the article. Let's shift. Let's shift. I think one of the most interesting parts of this story is that when the Greeks got to Kemet, they actually tell us some very interesting things about what they saw. Now, some of you have heard this one before, so I'm not going to um, spend a lot of time on this piece. But look at this. Herodotus, who is considered um, by some Western scholars to be the world's first historian. Sometimes they call him the father of history. I would not call him that. I would not call him that. But the reason why I'm mentioning how he is regarded is because very often we don't, they, they speak so highly of him, but then when he tells you that the Kemetic people were people that should be considered African, now all of a sudden they clam up. Listen to what he says. For the people of Colchis are evidently Egyptian. And this I perceived for myself before I heard it from others. So when I had come to consider the matter, I asked them both. And the Colchians had remembrance of the Egyptians more than the Egyptians of the Colchians. But the Egyptians said that they believed that the Colchians were a portion of the army of Sesostris, that's the Nusret. And that this was so I conjectured myself, I conjectured myself not only because they are dark skinned and have curly hair. So he's actually saying that the Colchians must have come from the Kemetic people because they are positioned in a place where the rest of people where they are don't look like that. So he said, well, they must look like the Egyptians because the Egyptians, the Kemetic people are dark skinned and have curly hair and so do the Colchians. This is what Herodotus says in the eighth century BCE. This is before the Greeks come to Kemen. This is what he says. Let's continue. What is the, what are these statues? Sonetta, do you know the name of these statues? Who can tell you the name of the statue? Um, that's you. Remesis, right? This one isn't Remesis. That's not Remesis? Nope. Nope. Oh. I want us to really be clear about what we're looking at here. These statues are actually in, and by the way, I'm showing you the image because the folks that are talking ain't never been there. 
It's so amazing that they continue to talk about stuff that they've never actually gone to see themselves. How do they think that that makes sense? I'm debating with people who have not been there. Sometimes I want to say, why am I debating with them? But I have to remind myself that I'm not just debating with them. I'm actually teaching everyone. These are generally called today the Colossi of Memnon. But I want you to know they are not of Memnon. They're not of Memnon. They're actually of Amenhotep III. But they were horribly damaged by the time the Greeks got to Kemet. So when they saw them and they looked at them, they said something quite curious. Can you see how damaged they are, Sonetta? Yep. They're actually more repaired than they were when the Greeks got there. But when the Greeks got there, the statue on the right would sit in the heat all day. By the way, it's very hot in this area. And then finally, when it would cool down and the wind would blow at dusk, the statue on the right would make a singing type noise. And that's because of the damage to it. But what did the Greeks say about the, the singing noise? What did they think about the singing noise? They didn't say Amenhotep III is singing. They called this the Colossi of Memnon. So ask yourself, in Greek myth, who is Memnon? That's the question you have to ask, because they're wrong about who it is, but... If they, if they think this is Memnon, you have to know something about why this is important. Look at this book. It's by Patricia A. Rosenmeyer. By the way, I give you sources. I give you sources. I gave you sources. By the way, when the Greeks got there, it wasn't um, repaired. It was repaired much more recently. Okay? When the Greeks got there, it used to sing. The repair was much more recent. But in this book called The Language of Ruins, by the way, I could tell you this because I believe towards them themselves, towards here themselves, but I want you to see that I am not just telling you something. I'm showing you the sources. Who is Memnon in Greek myth? Let's read. This is from the preface of the book. In November 130 CE, the Roman Emperor Hadrian and his wife, Sabina, sailed up the Nile as part of their grand tour of the eastern provinces. Their destination that month was to Egyptian Thebes. By the way, Thebes is today called Luxor, but the Kemetic people called it Waset, the seat of dominion. Let's continue where two massive monolithic statues had been carved in 1400 BCE to honor Amenhotep III. About a century before their royal visit, one of the statues, the Northern Colossus, was badly damaged by a strong earthquake. Its head fell off entirely, and the base began to emit a, curiously, a curious high-pitched noise at dawn. Scholars now think that the sound originated from the stone base expanding in the warmth of the rising sun. But by the late first century BCE, the statue had been re-identified as Memnon, the Ethiopian king killed at Troy. I want you to understand. If the Greeks get there and they hear this song, and they say, oh, this is Memnon, because the idea was that Memnon was a king, and Memnon was, um, he fought bravely in the Battle of Troy. You should understand that um, Memnon came to the assistance at the Battle of Troy. He fought with Achilles, by the way. He fought with Achilles. And during this battle, he loses to Achilles, but he is reborn. He is an Ethiopian. He is the king of Ethiopia. So if they are saying that this statue in Kemet belongs to the Ethiopians, 
then they're saying that the people around them are what? Ethiopian. And in fact, they began to call the whole area Memnonia. The land where Memnon was in, in control. That's what they said. So clearly they thought, they thought that this area was an area for African, for black Africans. Look at this um, 17th century painting, a uh, drawing that's meant to be uh, Memnon. This is how Memnon occurs in Western thinking. Someone's going to say, Jabari, you're showing me something from the 17th century. Okay. You know, I'm never, um, I'm always up to the challenge with the source, right? Right? Here's a Greek amphora, a wine vase that shows Memnon with two Greek warriors. Look at Memnon, look at the Greek warriors. Look at Memnon, look at the Greek warriors. I want you to understand that the Greeks thought that this section of Kemet particularly was black. That's what they said. And the Greeks get to Kemet at around 332 BCE. By the way, you should know that Hadrian gets there all the way in 130. So we're talking about 200 years since they've been there. They still say that the Kemetic people are dark, are black. Look at his hair compared to their hair. Look at his skin compared to their skin. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Um, Dr. Barnum says, no, where does Herodotus describe ancient Egyptians as black? He, in fact, compares them to the Colchians, a people who inhabited Georgia in the Caucasus, not birth dates Ethiopians. Uh, you know, reading is fundamental. Reading is fundamental. He says the Colchians are dark skinned and have curly hair. The Colchians are in um, are in Georgia, my friend. Please don't embarrass yourself. Please don't embarrass yourself. When you say Georgia, are you what are you referring to? Are you referring to the area near um, near uh, uh, Russia, or what are you referring to? Anyway. I, listen, I'm, I, you just need to understand, this is what he said. That's all I need to show you. This is what he says. He says that the Colchians are dark-skinned and have curly hair. And he recognizes that the Egyptians, that they must come from the Egyptians, which tells you that he is saying that the Egyptians are have dark skin and have curly hair. What's wrong with you? Your, your quarrel is not with me. Your quarrel is in Herodotus. Your quarrel is not with me. It's with Herodotus. Here's something else. Um, I find this interesting because, you know, I have gone all over the world to tell this story. How many of you have been to Museo Egizio in Italy, in Turin, Italy? How many of you have been to Turin, Italy to look at Museo Egizio? I have. By the way, it's the only museum outside of Africa that is exclusively, exclusively a storehouse of comedic art. Here goes the book, Museo Egizio, from when I was there. Here's the book. You have to do the research, family. Do the research. That's what you have to do. And um, if you haven't done the research, then instead of trying to contest what the brother who's doing the research is doing, maybe you should ask a question. <laughs> maybe you should ask a question. That might be smarter for you to do. 
Well, I want you to know that Museo Ujizio, many of the artifacts are from an Italian um, uh, 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 scholar named Berna, Berna, um, Bernardino Giovetti. Bernardino Giovetti. And when he comes to Kemet, and this is much later, he's there in the 1900s. He actually has a picture of himself and the people that are there drawn. I find this image fascinating. He calls th these other, he, he describes who some of his compatriots are, Antonio Lobolo, Joseph Rossingana, John Jacques Rifad, Count de Forbin, Leon de Belafon, but the rest of them he calls an Egyptian, an Egyptian. I think this is fascinating. The person who engraved it, Jean Pierre Granger, look at the images of the people he called the Egyptians. What? <laughs> This is in the museum at Museo Gizio. Fascinating. Look at how they're depicted. By the way, look at this guy's hair. <laughs> look at his hair. Look at his hair. I took this picture myself at the museum. This is my work. This is my work. If you haven't done what I've done, why do you think that you know more? Because you did a quick little Google search? Is that what you think? Is that what you think? And it's not just the guy with his very interesting hair. Look at this guy's features. I mean, I want you to recognize what we're dealing with here. You have to do the work. You have to do the work. You have to do the work. Dr. Banub, the, uh, um, he says here, not only did he not name the Colchians as Ethiopes, in the same sentence, he once again distinguished between the Egyptians and the Ethiopes. Where did Her Herodotus say the Ethiopians live? My friend, he's making a distinguishment, between, he's distinguishing between Kemet and Cush. He doesn't need to say they're Ethiopes. He's telling you that they're dark with curly hair. Reading is fun. You know, where, where did you get your degree? Could we call the university and ask them if you took a literacy exam? Because at this point, I don't even know what we're arguing about. This country above Elephantine now begins to be inhabited by Ethiopians. He's talking about the Kushites. They're two different nations. But that's not what is said 600 years later when Hadrian gets there. Stop. Stop. Oh my goodness. Let's continue. And you know what? You're typing a lot. If you really want to do this, send San Netter an, Egypt, uh, uh, an email. Ethiopian's skin is black and blacker than that of others. That that's just the truth. So, what's the so? What does that mean? So, what does that mean? Africans all over the continent have varying um, complexions. They don't all look the same. They don't all look the same. Is someone from Italy and someone from um, Scotland? Do they look the same? Would you both consider them Europeans? 
So I, I just think that you, if you really feel strongly, send them an email. If you're not going to send an email, sit down and take some notes. Okay. You going in tonight, Tabari? I'm. T I, I don't even know what these folks think they're doing. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. It's very clear that the comedic people made contrast between the, com the themselves and the Nubians, but that doesn't mean that they're not black. Just because one looks different than the other means that one is not black. Right, right. Are you able to make a logical argument? They're different people. The Africa has a very diverse phenotype. You can find people that are routinely around five feet and people who are routinely nearly seven feet. Why don't you go to the area of, um, of the Congo where you might find the oldest people on the planet. By the way, they're not extremely dark. No one's arguing they're not Africans. And then go to um, Kenya where you'll see people who are much taller and darker. Are they both not Africans? What argument are you making now? Sonetta's darker than me. Is Sonetta African and I'm not African? I hope that weed is legal in the state that you live in. Because you're smoking something. And if you really want to debate this, stand up. Yeah, open up the panel, man. They don't want no smoke to Bobby, man. I'm not even finished yet. Let me cut. Let me. I'm almost done. Let's right. go. Why is they don't even want to come in and ask you no questions? By the way, what do the scholars say? I want you to know something. Not every scholar agrees with me. That's not necessary. But there are many that do. There are many that do. How about this book? By the way, I wish I had time to pull the links on it. Because one of the times that I was on your platform and Ankh was already there, he was reading this book. And I put it up and I said, hey, that's a good book. I'm reading it too. And he nodded. I'm going to put the, the video up too. He's reading the book. So what does this book say about Kemet? This book that is a recent book by Christopher Eret. What, what does it say about ancient Kemet with regard to the rest of Africa? That's what I really want you to ask yourself because this is not just um, someone who feels that I should continue to have these discussions because I'm a quote unquote Afrocentrist. I am an Afrocentrist, but I'm an Afrocentrist that can that can read let's be clear about this let's be clear about this so who is christopher errett christopher errett holds holds the title of distinguished research professor at ucla at ucla let's see what he says ancient egypt was in africa more important, ancient Egypt was of Africa. That is not the way that the previous two centuries of Western scholarship have presented this history. For too long, ancient Egypt has been portrayed as if it was an offshoot of earlier Middle Eastern developments, as a region of somehow intrusive peoples coming from somewhere outside of Africa. It is long past the time for us all to discard these old notions rooted as they are in the self-serving racialist presumptions of the 19th century Europeans, notions that too many people still today simply assume and never think to examine. I'm telling you better examine. The most recent generation of scholars and scholarship on Nubia and Egypt have been uncovering extensive new bodies of evidence, and they are casting aside the older assumptions and following where the evidence leads. The older ideas do linger on though, and scholars from the other fields of study, not versed in the newer findings, and older Egyptologists as well may still presume those views. There is, for example, a recent genetics article proposing that the ancient Egyptians were of Levantine background. By the way, he's talking about the same article that I'm talking about. That's how I know I'm, I'm, I'm doing good work. Because when the scholars are refuting the stuff that I've refuted without reading them, I know that I'm doing good work. I know I'm doing good work. That article that I read to you was from 2017. When did this book come out? 
Sonnetter. When did this book come out? 2023. This is new. This is new. And this is a PhD scholar. Let's continue. How about Sonia Zakruski? Here's, his, here's her article, Variation in Ancient Egyptian Stature and Body Proportions. This is in the Wiley Online Library. Some of you will not be able to access it because you have to have a university passcode. I do. Because I am a historian that teaches for the City University of New York at Hunter College. Dr. Banud, maybe you don't know who you're talking to. Maybe you don't know who you're talking to. Okay. Stature and the pattern of body proportions were investigated. Let's make it a little larger. In a series of six times successive Egyptian populations in order to investigate the biological effects on human growth and of development and intensification of agriculture and the formation of state level social organization. This is an important um, article. I'm not going to read it all here. I'm just not going to because it's already after 1230. But I, what, what I want you to know is she looked at the percentages and what was her analysis? She actually says the ancient Kemetic people were super Negroid. I don't even know if I like that term, but I know what she's trying to say. Super Negroid. So when you please stop using the term Negroid. But look at what she calls it. She says that their st body stature and body proportions are super Negroid when you compare them to the people in the region. <sighs> Let's continue. How about what um, is said here in the Oxford Encyclopedia of Ancient Egypt? The Oxford Encyclopedia of Ancient Egypt. Um, this scholar's name is uh, Scott. Oh, what's his name again? Scott. And I know I actually have it written here, but I did not include it. Stuart Smith, Stuart Tyson Smith. Stuart Tyson Smith is his name. He says in his section on ancient Egypt, ancient Egyptian practices show strong similarities to modern African cultures, including divine kingship, the use of headrest, body art, circumcision, and male coming of age rituals, all suggesting an African substratum or foundation for Egyptian civilization. Come on now. I've shown you DNA. I've shown you someone who actually is doing um, studies of body proportions. And I've even shown you someone who was studying culture. And a scholar that says that some of this old scholarship needs to be discarded. And this is this is my sister, someone I actually know, Solange Ashby. And she's gotten a lot of heat because on video, on a tour of Kemet, she said, what about the usurpation of African history in Egypt by the Arabs who only arrived in 642 CE? Dr. Saranj Aspi is a friend. She teaches at Barnard. What do the scholars say? This is important. This is important. And Sonnetter, I don't know if she's gonna come on now because she's been hounded by folks, but I think that we should try to get her on. She's the only person of African descent that I know that has a doctorate in Egyptology. Well, that's not true. I know one more that works at the Brooklyn Museum now. She's actually completing her dissertation. What do you mean to get her on, brother? Say again? What do you mean try to get her on? I'm saying that we need to talk to her regularly. Yeah, get her on. Let's go, man. I'm ready. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, let me take a quick, quick, um, a quick, quick um announcement, right quick. For the people, I want everybody to know it's going down tomorrow. We got um, Elder Yara going up against Edward Dodge. The, the topic is, did Israel have two gods, El and Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. All right, so that's going down tomorrow at 7 o'clock sharp. Elder Yara finally got him a good, good, serious debate. And this is going to be good, Jabari, if you could catch it. Or you catch the feed on the, um, the after show or whatever. Right. I know you're busy. But I just wanted to let y'all know that's going down tomorrow at 7 o'clock right here on Sarnetta Studios. I'll likely be traveling tomorrow night, but I will definitely try to, to check in. All right. Let me just say this. In conclusion, we need to recognize that it is Africa and Africans who created, maintained, and even renovated ancient Kemen when in times of, um, of, cha of challenges. That's what we're looking at. Here you're seeing an image of two of the most influential ancient Kemetic people. On the left, you are seeing Namr. On the right, you are seeing Mentuhotep. And sometimes when I'm at the museum, they say, well, it's just painted black. We're not just talking about the color of his skin. Look at those features. We need to acknowledge that it is Africans who created Kemet. That's what we need to do. And, you know, folks that are modern Egyptians, if they want to posit themselves in ancient Kemet, they should acknowledge that many of them have small amounts of sub-Saharan um, DNA. They also, many of them could also say that those ancient Kemetic people were their parents, but they would rather try to argue that the ancient Kemetic people look like they do. That's a ridiculous argument. Do you think if you went to my great, 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 great grandfather, he would be of the same complexion of me? Or have, or is my DNA, unfortunately, also an admixture? That's the argument they should be making if they want to be taken seriously. But rather, they are bringing up old, Eurocentric, racist arguments. That's what they're doing. That's a shame. And for those folks like Chief X, like Ankh, who has been saying some things as well, and others, Ngozi, let me just say, please don't think you can just do a Google search and come here. Folks like, and, and I'm going to tell you, I have tussled with Reggie for years, but Reggie has done more study in, in in over his life than you will ever be able to. Smash Rockwell, more study in his life than you'll ever be able to. You need to understand that your simple Google search won't cut it. If you want to come forward and, and debate this, you had better get back to the lab. Spend some years looking at it and see if you still come up with the same um, articulation that you do right now. I doubt it. I doubt it. Well, family, I want to say I want to thank you for staying on with me really late. It's almost 1 a.m. Um, I want you to know that I really think that if you're going to continue to do this um, and you want to continue to study, travel with us to the sites. I go to Kemet every year. You can come with me. Come with me this year. Come with me to Ghana this year. I'm going to both places. Jabari only wants to focus on Kemet. He's ignoring West Africa. From people who don't spend time in West Africa. How dare you question me? But why do you only go to Ghana? Like, whenever you go to Egypt, you always say, I'm going to Ghana. Why not somewhere else? Well, because, uh, honestly, I don't always have a lot of time to travel and I'm gonna to go to the places where I have the best contacts. I actually am, you know what, for those people who are saying that I am ignoring West Africa, I'm not gonna allow you to refer to me as Jabari anymore. I'm gonna tell you have to call me Nana Kwame Brenya the first. I'm not gonna to answer to Jabari from some of you. You must call me Nana Kwame Brenya the first, which is my installment name. 
and then when you call me appropriately, then I'll respond. So I, I really want us to acknowledge that um, we have a lot of work to be able to restore the names of our African ancestors. I want to acknowledge that um, as we do this work, we will be rewarded because we will have a greater, um, we have greater access to our ancestors. This is the work that we must do. And I'm talking about the ancestors in Northeast Africa. I'm talking about the ancestors in West Africa, Southern Africa, Central Africa. Why is it that you are trying, some of you, to separate yourselves from certain parts of the continent? Are you unintentionally doing the work of your enemy? Please, family, do some real work in real study. And don't just read the titles of articles. If you really want to understand what's happening, you have to read the scholarly articles themselves. And when you read them, you will likely say what Jabari is saying is correct. This article that I heard about in the in the um, news is not actually saying what I was told it said. But you got to do the work. You have to do the work in order to continue to um, join this conversation. If you're not, you are not equipped to have these dialogues. And what you're doing is you're wasting my time and yours. How about you go back and do some research and then come back with a more reasoned position? That's what I think that you ought to do. With that, family, um, Sonetta, I know it's late, but if you want to bring in some folks, I see one brother here, you can certainly do that. I'm I'm um prepared to receive you, um to talk to you to describe these things, and I also before I close I should show you one more thing. Let me just show you one thing just to to steam some of these people. Take a look. You are now for those of you who continue to use the ridiculous term Egyptomaniac, you are now only allowed to call me Nana Kwame Brenya the first. Here I go, in Intama. That's me in Intama. That's me. I'm only focused on Kemet. We're only focused on Kemen. Let's continue to do the work, family. Okay. Peace, brother Neil. Hey, peace, uh, Jabari. I, uh, magnificent. You all, you all, you already know magnificent presentation tonight. Uh, one thing that I think Sarnetta should have dropped the very first bomb on was when you brought the four Nasut Betis or Pharaohs, as we call them. Uh, in, my, in the American ways or whatever, but you Yo, drop those bombs. Sorry, huh? put that back up, man. I was taking a screenshot. <laughs> I will put that picture back up. I'm Which sorry. picture of me or of of, of the you, of you, the one with you? Oh, yeah, that was dope. Yeah. I was taking a screenshot, so when I do a fly, I could probably use that one. Yes, as well. Okay, will do. Give me one second. I'm gonna put the other picture up as well. By the way, this this uh, graph is from my book. Uh -huh. The graph um, of the four uh, major periods, the four, four um, critical eras. It's from my book. Here we go. You could put that up, Sonetta. I don't see it yet. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah, this is, this is Nana Kwame Brenya the first. I have many images. I mean, when I go to Ghana, I have work to do. It's not, I'm not just, you know, chilling. I mean, we, we do chill, but I'm not just chilling. Um, all right, I got it. Uh -oh. Good. 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 And I'm also going to put this up here. Here goes the, the four uh -oh. critical errors. That's the okay. four critical errors. Can I can I finish my question? Yeah. Sure, Go ahead, brother. Uh oh, okay. I see T Fex in the house too. Peace, T Fex. Peace, what? brother. I thought I seen him. Um oh there he is. How you doing, T Fex? I'm all right, and you? All right. I, I noticed that uh, you're down here in L.A. with me, somewhere by Lemur Park. 
Oh, you from the Murray Park area? Well, no, actually, I'm off of like Broadway, Imperial, but I'll, I'm always through there all Wait, the time. Well, you're close to me. I'm by Hoover and Century. Oh, we go. Okay, so we're gonna hook up. I need to talk to you, brother. So why are you <laughs> over there when I was there, brother? I was there. I, I could have. I came you. looking for you, Sal. You know, I was calling I you. Up. Chief Fax. Chief Fax was oh. there. Oh man, I was trying to catch y'all. I know Choo Choo, that brother Choo Choo was there. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. I knew him for for a while, but I need to talk. But what I was gonna say, yeah, Chief Fax. So you know, Astro Quazy and all of us, the Caris Unity Center. You, you you all through the through the community. My thing is this. You know they're telling us the origins, the foundations of Kemet is coming from the from the southern parts and all this. We're not saying, and like like Brother Jabari is saying, he's not saying the West Africa is not our. You know, we immediately come through that way. But you know, it was aquatic. The uh, Sahara was aquatic, and they had different cattle tribes that went both in different directions. There's got to be total pose. We're family, man. Who disagrees with that? Oh well, then hey. I'm not, let me give, no, don't, now leave me alone now, Chief. I ain't I got want, no problem want, with you. I want y'all to ask y'all a question now. That's what Okay, I'm yeah, let me I ask Brother Jabari this question. Stuff. Okay, I got it. Uh, Jabari, what test, DNA test, would you recommend that I take? I'm, I'm straight taking it. Now, you know, I, I actually believe that many of the publicly available tests um, serve different purposes, right? So I think that if you connect to Ancestry.com, one of the things that's good about Ancestry.com is that more, more people have taken that than others. So you then connect to a large number of family members. I have like near, I think it's probably over 400 now, cousins that I don't know. And so I'm getting to know that family. And so that's important. Of course, if you do, you have to do ancest, um, AfricanAncestry.com to connect yourself to the continent. They have the largest... Um, uh, uh, database of of um, Africans so that you're able to do that work. And I'm just about to do that one. It's expensive, but I'm just about to do that one. And, and that connect me to Kimmy or, you know, like like how that one guy was on the news where he was, the lady was like, your DNA goes back to Ramsey. It might. Okay. okay. It might. I mean, okay. I, I can't tell you what your DNA says. But exactly. you know, though, Africans don't say you only pour libation to the ones that are directly in your lineage. Exactly. That's not exactly. African. Either. Exactly. But that's how, right. that's how some of these new folks in our community are making it sound like you, yeah. you have to focus on your ancestors. Like, yeah. you got to take a DNA test before you pour a libation. That don't make right. any sense. So I'm going to leave out with this last question, Sa. If you ever get a chance, check this book out, uh, Jabarius, by Clive Ford. Of it's course. Called, you, are you up on him? Of course I have that book. Oh, oh, oh yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Good to speak to you again. All the time. All right. Peace, uh, Chief X. Did you get to watch the whole presentation? I watched every um every minute of it. Good. And I took notes. You see, Good. reputation <laughs> notes. I'm Good. just like I'm just like you, Jabari. You know, real ones, we take notes, make sure we don't That's forget right. nothing or, or miss nothing. That's right. But and I hope you feel that I, I, I certainly I, I respect you. So I, I have respect for you. This was a refutation on the scholarly information. There were some ridiculous people in the chat, but I really um, I want you to see some of this because I think I honestly think that I might be able to might take a little while shift your thinking on this. I do. I do. I seriously doubt it, but. You're supposed to seriously doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've shifted the people. You see, people are now kind of on my side and preaching the same thing I'm preaching when previous to me bringing this topic out, nobody was even having these discussions unless they was in the world of academia. Mm. But in this online conscious community, as a black man, no one ever came for uh, Egypt and said it wasn't black. So I, I spawned I, a lot of Hold up, I spawned wait. a lot of um, enthusiasm, and I spawned a lot of people wanting to get in and talking about this topic. And every day, for the last three years, they've been talking about it. Would you agree? Every day for the last three years? I don't know about every oh, day. I'm talking on different platforms. Not just, I'm talking, you know. I, I don't know. I don't. I, I okay. Maybe. Every other every other day. Maybe maybe okay. there's yeah. discussion yeah. around it definitely. Right. Right. Um, but some of it, honestly, Chief X, some of these debates are people who are hating on me. Well, I wouldn't say that. Some of people just I, I'm talking. Yeah, yeah. No, they are hating. 
they're they, disagreeing they, with stuff that they all agreed with recently. Right. A lot of people are hate on you, but that's on yeah. another. But they hate on you for another issue, not about but, black Egypt or white. Whatever Egypt. I say, they disagree with. Right. Yeah. But I'm just talking about on this topic right now that we're, we're speaking up. That's not you and me. But you know, some of those people, so, I would count them as people who are on your on your side because they turn on you in a second too. So I mean, yeah. I mean, everybody's a lot of people are full of it. Yeah. 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 So I'm just talking. About, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be long. I'm not even gonna go back and forth with you, Jabari. Mm -hmm. I'll address this at a later date. Yep. I just wanted to make a maybe a two minute statement, right? And uh, I'm gonna get out of here because I know it's late, and I know you guys don't want to be up too late, right? So first, I just want to say this because we talk about um, the invasions and how all these invasions changed people, like right? And I remember last um, few weeks ago or a week ago when I did the presentation, you agreed with me that in Modern day Egypt, right now, when you go there, you can barely see black folk. Uh, uh, from my understanding, Egypt is 3% ethnic groups, right? So you may see 100 so called modern day Egyptians, then you may see one black folk. Unless you go way down south, you know, by the border. You, and I, you agree with me on that. So, yeah, I think that you don't see let as me, many. Let me just finish my point while I'm on it because I'm going to get thrown off. Oh, I was going to agree with you. Okay. So, I what I'm saying is, if it's that way, that means a whole population of people had to be displaced. I'm talking about like in major mass. So on that point, we all know that Sub-Saharan Africa, Egypt, Nigeria, was all chopped up and divvied up by European nations. Africa... Ghana, Nigeria, places in the Congo were conquered and invaded by the Dutch, the British, Portuguese, Spain, and all kind of, you know, different European nations and fractions. But guess what? The population is still black. They never disappeared, right? They never went anywhere. When I went to Ghana, we went inland to Kumasi. I'm sure you've been to Kumasi. Of course. I, used to, I, I like to say I'm a Kumasian, right? I always say Asante gang. I didn't see not one white man. I didn't see nobody who even looked half white there. The people are still there. So my point is, before I move on, and then we can, you, you guys can clo close out whatever you would do. My point is, claiming that invasions displaces people and just removes the population, a whole population of black folk is just wrong and incorrect, right? Uh, a lot of the Egyptians had their own customs and Coptic people didn't really mix with other people. They remained amongst each other in general, okay? Now, I know there was some admixing, but not to the point you guys are talking about, right? Hey, me, so my let, point is, and I'm going to just move on to the next point. I'm, I'm, I'm no, wait, wait, Before you move to the next point, let me ask you. Let me, but ask, let me just say this last sentence. The okay, people of sub-Saharan Africa are black as ever. Let me ask you a question. Still point. there and not displaced in spite of the let many me, invasions, colonizations, me, okay. and divvying it all up. We have let to admit that you, and be let honest. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. You've been to Ghana. We, we both spent time in Ghana. What year did the Portuguese get to Ghana? Um, I would say the. You can first give me a ballpark. I'm not going to uh, beat you up on an let's exact. Let's say 1500. Okay, what what date did the Greeks? Let's just say Greeks get to Egypt, get to Kemet. Let's say. You tell me. I might be off on that. Five BCE. Okay. So we're actually talking about the fact that people have been going into Kemet mm -hmm. for over 2,000 years more than they were going into Ghana. Right. That's what you got to so understand. Right off the bat, wait a minute. So right off the bat, I want you to recognize you are not comparing apples and oranges at all. Mm -hmm. At all. Let me tell you and why. another major, wait a minute, another major thing occurred. When Drop most the before, before Europeans, it gets started. Hold on, hold on. When the, most of those um, European nations went into Kemet, they did their their strategy was quite different than when the European nations came into West Africa. In Kemet, 
they were deciding that they were going to hold territory. Those foreign places, they were going in. But the Western nations that got to West Africa did something quite different. What did they do? They took people out. So, let me so the, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So the difference that you're talking about is one that, uh, once again, you're not comparing apples and oranges. If you went to, um, to London today, Jabari. would you meet some people uh, that would tell you, hold on, brother, I let you speak. No, no, I didn't speak yet. Would you, would you meet, but you're saying Jabari, Jabari. I know you no, want no, to say- No, no, Jabari, you, 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 oh, wait I, a I, I just, before, before you went, I just said, I just want to make two statements and get out of here. I'm not going to be long. Just let me finish my spiel. I'm, I, brother, I'm cooking. I'm going to let you get the other sentence. Okay. But what I want you to say is, when you go to London, you're going to find people who will tell you they're of African descent, but you wouldn't know that by looking at them. And these are people who actually have come away from the continent. So in some ways, what you'd have to do is compare some of those folks that live in Kemet today to people that are not in, in West Africa, because that is where the, the, the serious admixture occurred. Not on the continent, but off the continent. How many of you have seen... Sorry, the come on, you're going to filibuster... <laughs> Brother, this is this is my evening. I know, but I, I knew I wasn't going to be able to get a few oh, senses out. I oh, knew it oh, before I came oh, on. That's I mean, why I don't even want to come on. Brother, I let you speak. I let. I you didn't speak. finish my point, um, Jabari. Oh, all brother, I'm saying. Brother, I'm don't sorry. Get nervous. You didn't get to finish your point. I'm sorry you didn't get to finish. Okay, me. so I uh, cannot talk, or should I just be your first? Just, speak? And if you wait, I'll let you make your second point. Okay, go ahead. Brother. What you would need to do is you look at people like like Haley. Um, a very popular actress, uh, um, singer. Most people didn't even know that she's um, of African descent. There are many people who are like that. And if you go to to Egypt today, modern Egypt, you're also going to see people who you might not actually believe that um, that they're of African um, uh, DNA. But some of those same people who are very light skinned Arabs also have African DNA. And so that's the reality. We're talking about admixtures. And those admixtures occurred at different periods in time in history. You can't just compare the, the, the um, massive admixture that occurs in the 1900s, 1800s, to massive admixture that occurred um, nearly 2,000 years earlier. You should expect that those people would look different. Okay. Period. Go now, to your please, second. now, please, let me just go to I'm finished. I don't, I don't, I don't want you to interject. I'm not gonna be long. I, I promise you, that, brother. Here we go. The second point. I'm gonna try not to say anything. Okay, please, please. But I'm not saying I'm gonna let you go to your finish. I don't know what you're gonna say. So, so you, go oh, all right, so all right, before I go, are you telling me you're about to interrupt me? No, I'm not saying that. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm damn near I'm begging. Please, can I just I'm, go? Wait, can, wait a minute. Wait, Chief X. Wait, wait. Let's let's define the rules of the game. Tonight, this is my show. I get. I got it. Right? So I'm not saying I'm going to interrupt you, but I'm not saying I'm not going to interrupt you. I'm okay. going to try to listen to your point. That's what I'm going to do. I, I don't want to, I'm not trying to throw you off, but uh, you have to recognize that, you know, you're in the addendum tonight, just like I was on the addendum the other right. night. But when you came on with my presentation, I let you get your question and your th thing out. I didn't stop. I let you get your question in too, and I'm giving you another I, one. I, I've gotten about three sentences out, and I, ha and I haven't That's been able to continue. Cool, that's not okay. true. Okay, can I continue? Of course you can. I'm okay. saying I'm, you can. I'm telling you now, as an as an adult, I'm not going to be long. Just please go let ahead. me finish. Go ahead. I'm, le okay. I'm letting you go. I'm letting okay. you go. Okay, please let me finish. Okay, thank you. Now, the difference is, in Western Central Africa, they removed 11 million Africans and brought them to the diaspora. That never happened in Egypt. And we cannot lie on the Egyptians. This is a huge difference. I don't know why Sankofa is looking funny there. That's a fact. 11 million Africans was removed from, the, from, from Western Central Africa and brought to America, Brazil, and the diaspora. Put me on the screen, sir. Let's be clear. That's a major difference than what went on in Egypt. Also, if a Cameroonian invades Nigeria or invades Ghana, they're people of the same Western Central African region. So they're not going to affect the change. You can't tell a Nigerian from a Ghanaian or from a Cameroonian because they look alike 
because there are people of the same region, okay? People in the same region usually look alike, just to clarify what I'm saying, okay? Now, when Egypt was getting invaded, they were getting invaded by their neighbors. Cameroon, Nigeria, Ghana, same region, neighbors. So, if Egypt was getting invaded by its neighbors, when you read the DNA, it said they had affinities and they were closely related to people in the Near East. Meaning, from Cairo to Canaan, Israel, is about 250 miles. From Cairo to Khartoum, way down south, by the six cataract and go all going on, that is 1,400 miles. Major difference than 250 miles. So if they're being invaded by neighbors, they're being invaded by other Mediterranean people who already look similar and share similar genetic affinities. That's the difference. Now, let me move on to my other point. So wait, the population wait, no, 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 is no, 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 not going to change, and they're going to remain wait, looking the wait, same wait. as modern-day Egyptians as in Indonesia. It's just I'm, like the uh, it's just like in 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 in, in Africa when the Asante tribes was ra raiding neighboring tribes and got bigger and was the biggest slave trading tribe of West Africa. They looked the same people that they're invading and kidnapping and selling for slaves. They all look alike. Same reason the people in that region. Now let me move on to the okay. next point, and I'm done. Okay, wait, wait, my wait, next wait. point, and I'm done, Jabari. My next no, point, and I'm sorry, done. Sorry, we, no, this is where the period has to be, and I'm gonna wait, and I'll, I'll even allow you to get your other point in, but I'm gonna respond to this point right now. Okay. Okay. I have no problem letting you get the other one in, <laughs> but, but you you're, you're not gonna be able. Although to you did promise me I could get it so. in, I, I was just going back to a future. You get it in. You, got it. you just okay. said you have another point, so I want to okay. respond to the point you just made. And I listened to the point. Um, I think that uh, when you say that you're talking about neighbors, right? First of all, you're talking about neighbors. One has an entire sea that separates parts of those folks that you call neighbors. But I also want you to recognize when you say that they had similar DNA, you don't just get to say that without saying, well, what study are you referring to? And so I showed you the study that you're referring to. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. So then you're going to have to, uh, when you have a chance, I did. to know which study you are referring to. I did in my presentation. One, the one you put in your presentation, it doesn't say where it's from, but you have to look at the year that it was done. Okay. So, me... so no, no, brother, you have to wait. You have to wait. So this is the study that you are at. You may not know this, Chief X, because you didn't read the scholarly paper, but this is the study. I read that all this and showed this. I put, brother, this, this, exact, is, I put this, this exact link up when I brother, did my presentation. This is, this is this is the study that you're referring to. But but before you get into that, Jabari, can I just finish no, my last point? Because you, no, you, I know you, I, you, reneged on, you reneged on your promise, Jabari. No, and you're looking very nervous and erratic, Jabari. I just want to say a few things and I'm done, and then you can I'm about to get off. We don't want to hear it. I'm going to allow you to wait. You got don't it. Don't get off. Don't get off. I want you to make your next point. I want you to make your next point, but that doesn't mean you get to make it before I respond to this point. And I told you that I would let you cook, but I was also reserving the right to interrupt. I told you that. I let you make a full point. You went on sure, for a while. I, I, but I said I don't want to keep going back and forth. We well, talked about that, we talked about the invasions. You talked about it. I talked about. Show, I just want to move on to the next point. When it's your show, you can then decide. The, okay, the, so we're talking about invasions again. Go ahead. So wait a minute. So wait a minute. I want you to recognize that this is the study you're referring to. And in this study, it actually tells you that they're looking at populations from the Roman period and comparing it to the modern era. Why leave out the new kingdom? It says new kingdom. Wait a minute, brother. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Does it so, say new kingdom? What? Chief, Chief, you got to let him talk so he won't talk on your time. Okay, man. but does it let say New talk. Kingdom, Jabari? Why are you leaving that out? When you look at when you look at this um, source, it actually doesn't even mention the New Kingdom. I'm not, I'm, that wasn't my source. Brother, you have to stop now. You have to stop. 
sheep, sheep. I let you, you know what I'm responding to you. I let you speak extensively. Wait no, a minute. Didn't. I haven't even got. All right, come on, come on. Wait a minute. I'm gonna let you get your other point in, but you, I'm gonna respond to this one, then let you get your other point. So when you look at the article, the the one that says New Kingdom, let me show you this. The one that mentions the New Kingdom is from this study from Nature Nature Communications. They're referring to the same study. It's referring to the same study, but you have to read the study, not what's referring to the study. So this one says it includes data from 90 mummies buried from 1380 BCE during um, Egypt, uh, Egypt's New Kingdom and AD 425, the Roman era, right? That's what this says. But when you read the scholarly article, what you does- You said this in your presentation, Jabari. Yes, brother, but apparently you didn't hear it because you're saying the same thing that's wrong. I heard So you. when you read the actual- um, uh, 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 a scholarly study, it actually describes the fact that they, look at this, however, we note that all our genetic data was obtained from a single site in Middle Egypt and may not be representative of all of ancient Egypt. It is possible for populations in the south of Egypt were more closely related to those of Nubia and had a higher sub-Saharan genetic com component, which in in which case the argument for an influx of sub-Saharan ancestries after the Roman period might only be partially valid and have to be nuanced. They're not even talking about the new kingdom in this study. So I want you to recognize you have to read the study itself. You can't just read what someone said about it. And that's the error you made. That's the error you made. But even if they did have a few from the New Kingdom and some from the Roman period, they're already telling you that the, the, the site itself is questionable because they've already told you, listen to what it says. Um, written sources indicate that by the third century BC, Abu Sir el-Melek was the, the center of a wider region that comprised the northern part of the Herilakpilites province and had close ties with the Fayum and Menphite provinces involving the transport of wheat, cattle breeding, beekeeping, and quarrying. In the early Roman period, the site appears to have been the main center of its own district. Abu Sir el Melik's proximity to and close ties to the Fayum are significant in the context of the study, as the Fayum in particular saw substantial growth in its population during the first hundred years of the Ptolemaic rule, presumably as a result of Greek migration. Later in the Roman period, many veterans of the Roman ar army, who at least, initially at least were not Egyptian, but people from disparate cultural backgrounds, settled in the Fayum area after the completion of their servants and service and formed social relations and intermarried with local populations. They're already telling you that this population is not representative of all the rest of the, of the area. In the period they're talking about, you have to read the study. Who in the community claims it is representative of the whole Egypt? Who you did! I, <laughs> I never claimed that. I never in my life claimed that. If I you clearly. Are arguing, okay, are, can I go? Can I go? If you No. If you are arguing that the DNA here tells us that the Kemetic people are more like the people in the period that we're talking about then you are arguing that the DNA is representative of Kemet when the article is not saying that. If I can say a you sentence. Have to read the article. Yeah, Don't you, make me play your words. You're nervous and trying to filibust. I'm not you, nervous Okay, at well, all. can I get a sentence out? I'm getting frustrated because you're interrupting me. And I've this already. Is, you're, this is mind you games, Jabari. Said. You won't even let me get my point out. No, I let you get two major points. No, I out. never got one point out. I was just talking about invasions. That's it. Family, and I family, haven't been able to say anything family, else. Family, if you heard him get two major points out, it'll one in the Jabari, chat. Jabari, Jabari, can I just go? Are it'll you finished reading the article? You read the article. Can I finish? It'll can I go? In the chat if you, no, now you have to wait. Because I was waiting for you to speak. Okay, and you you know, Sonetta, never mind. I, I knew I wasn't going to be able to speak, and I knew Jabari would get nervous and fill a bus and do all this old stuff. Look at the ones it's just in ridiculous. The I've never I seen you act this childish. One. I've never I seen you act this childish and nervous and erratic. Okay? I let you get out uh, you, didn't, you did not let me get what I'm trying to say said, out at all. And you, you said, are still talking after you read a whole said, article. You're still talking. Stop. Chief X, stop. You're so ready.
All right. First, all right. You, come on, come on, come on. First, you said, first you said you were making a point, and then you literally said, Jabari, you're you, repeating yourself. Literally right. said, come on, come on, Chief X. You got to interrupt him. Come on, man. Literally, listen. He read. He literally said, "Here's my next point." I said, "No, you have to stop there for me to respond to your point." And then I let him. I responded, and then I let him. I said, "Okay, go ahead." He said, "You're gonna let me speak to the end." I said, "I don't know if I'm going to. I my I want to hear your argument, but I'm not gonna let you just make point after point after point. Not on this show. I'm gonna respond to your point." He made another point, and then he said, let me go to my final point. I said, no, you have to pause here because I'm going to respond to your point. And I said, I want to hear your final point. I don't know what else you want me to do. This is not your show. This is my show tonight. And I even told you, if you want to debate this, we can debate it. All right. All right, Jabari, let's go. Um, you said He said he didn't say it. Do you have a clip of him saying what he said? Um, let's, why don't you play that? No, because you know what? He spoke for an hour, and it's going to take me time to find him okay. saying it. Okay. Everyone in the chat heard him say it. He just said tonight, if the DNA shows that they came from the same area in, in, in the Levant and Israel, and I said, well, Chief X, you can't say that. You have to say, what DNA? From what period? He just said the same thing which is wrong. I'm showing you the article. I'm reading the article. How are you going to disagree when I'm reading the article? Do you disagree with what I'm saying about the article? Then you can say, well, no, it didn't say that. So then we can talk about it. But you can't just say an article says something that it doesn't. I'm reading the article. All right, let's move on, Jabari. Let's go. I'm ready. Go ahead. Um, someone else is going to ask a question. Okay. Um, uh, let's go to Melanin God. What up, man? Oh, it looks like he got a Oh, Melanin God. What's up? Yeah, peace, oh. black power to y'all, man. No, I thought I can make a point. No, Please. I want to go. No, I want to go around. Um, um. Okay, okay. I got to go around. I'll get back. I get. I get back with y'all. I, 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 I don't leave yet. Don't leave. No, no, yet. no. It's okay. It's listen, okay. Listen. Don't leave. Don't you guys leave. can do the mind games. I'm Don't good. Leave, Don't leave. Okay, I'm trying. Let me get Jabari. You're still talking because it's my show. Okay, well, I, I, so since I cannot talk, let me go. I will go. Listen, listen. I, I want you just you just No, me, I did right not now. go. I have not made my point stop. yet. Everyone, stop. Everyone, stop. I want to hear your third point. But what I've said to you very clearly is I'm no. not going to let you make many points. I've heard you say this already. Why are you repeating this? Responding, you're responding like you didn't hear it. I heard you. I'm you asking you, can I go now? Stop. If you want to make your third point, I want to hear it's, I don't. It's not a third point. I haven't even made a second point. Brother, brother, I don't know what you're doing. But you make, go ahead. I'm going to let you go. But... Go ahead, go ahead, Chief. I'm going to let you get a, a, enough in so that we can discuss it. I want to discuss this with you. I want to discuss this with you. All right, let him go. Go ahead, go ahead, Chief. Go ahead, Chief. Okay. Son, I, I just want to say this and get off. I, 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 I see the game being played, right? I'm going to be interrupted again because Jabari got nervous. The only thing I responded to was the invasion thing. I was just making a little point. I hadn't even got to my points yet, but I won't get to them. I'm just want to make a few sentences and we're going to get out of here, okay? I, I, I understand people get nervous. This was just ridiculous, okay? <laughs> now, <laughs> oh, the Jawar's first thing that he said when it came out, I, and I took a note of everything you said. He's going to take, he's going to take time talking about the Africanity of Egypt. Not Chief X's presentation and claims, really. But he's going to talk about the Africanity of Egypt. Because it's an inter interesting challenge. I knew he wasn't going to address my specific presentation. I already knew that. That's why he came out with that first statement that I wrote down. Once he said that and he opened up with that, I said I knew he wasn't going to touch on what I talked about. 
Then he said he's going to talk about three points, and I wrote those three points down that he claimed I said. One is the Egyptians is not black. Okay, yeah. The second one is they the same as the modern-day Egyptians. Okay. And they're not black because of disagreements with Nubians. I never made a claim that they're not black because they had disagreements with Nubians. You misrepresented my point. You misrepresented my claim on purpose so you can fool the audience. Secondly, I never in my life said the ancient Egyptians are not African. You keep saying I said that the whole lecture through. You lied on me. The ancient Egyptians are Africans. The thing is, ancient e Africa is a diverse continent. So everybody on the continent of Africa is, wouldn't be considered black Africans. So to keep saying African, African, when you know the audience or people listening may not be that bright, and the only thing they can think of when you say African is a black person with nappy or kinky hair. Okay? I never said the Egyptians were not Africans. What I did say is Af Egypt is a transcontinental country. I said you can be three things at once. This is what I said. I said you can be of Mediterranean people, you can be Egyptian, you can be African, and, you, and they are connected to West Asia. And this is why Canaan used to be a colony of Egypt. They're connected, they're neighbors next door. So, of course, they're going to have other forms of culture that people in the South didn't have. They're going to have genetic relationships that people in the South don't have because of the Sahara Desert is a barrier to genetic flow in general. Okay? So, you, you know what? Egypt, and people like to always say they came from the South, and you guys push this falsehood. Narma was from Thinnis. The Egyptian nation state. Don't take me back to the Sahara 10,000 years ago. Thank you, Ngozi, for showing up. The Egyptian nation state started in central Egypt, and Narma unified who? Lower and upper Egypt. So clearly, he was unifying a people who was already in the north who were the same as the people in central Egypt. They were family, okay? He didn't unify with Nubia, with Sudan. You guys have to stop this nonsense. He unified with his own people, upper and lower Egypt, and then Narmer turned around and sent military expeditions down to Nubia to snatch up stuff. They weren't friendly. And you know there's plenty of pictures of Amenhotep III. Why would you show that black picture only when him and it representing death? He has several other pictures that are pale that you failed to show. Like these trickeries, and you show three other statues of all these people who may look <laughs> black. And all. Come on, Jabari. My point is, and I'm going to end it with this. You didn't touch my presentation because you said you were going to go line by line and address my presentation. Your first statement was, I'm not going to talk about Chief X presentation. I'm really going to talk about the Africanity of Egypt. That's what you did tonight, okay? And you got you got to showing federal buildings and as it listen, Jabari. When you're ready to address my presentation, I'll be ready to talk about it. You didn't do that tonight. Okay, let me say to you: if you've heard me, if you can find a tape of me, a video of me saying I'm going to go line by line. I will give you a hundred dollars, but you have to admit that when you don't find it, you're gonna send money to my cash app because I okay. never, well, you have not brother. I let you speak. Stop it. Have some discipline. I did not say I was gonna go line by line. I showed you his three major points, and I refuted his three major points. Every single one of them. And don't make me pull video of him saying the Egyptians weren't black. They didn't like black people. Look at what they did to the Egyptians, to the Nubians. He says it all the time. You can find a dozen videos of him saying it. He also said, um, I said I was going to talk about the Africanity of Egypt. He is correct I did say that. But 
The reality is his definition of Africa is different from my definition of Africa. And if you listen to me for five minutes and listen to him for five minutes, you should be clear what we're talking about. What I even said, I want to be clear that I am i don't like the word Black Africa, but I'm going to use it for a moment so that you know what I'm talking about. I said that in my presentation. So when I say I'm going to talk about the Africanity of Kemet, what I'm actually saying is I'm going to talk about the affinities, DNA, cultural, and even commercial affinities of Kemet with the rest of Africa. That's what I'm talking about. If he doesn't see that that's a refutation of what he's saying, he's punch drunk. I don't know how else to respond to that. So if he doesn't think that that is refuting what he said, I don't know what he thinks. He also said, um, I always say that Kemet comes from the South. Kemet does come from the South. And I didn't just say it. I showed you two, three scholars that said it too. I wasn't the only one that said it. I showed you three scholars that said it. So, and, and, and you know, I even did, I even did something that I would not normally do. I showed you Tom Hu, European scholars that said it. Because I knew very well that the other thing that he was going to do, which he didn't because of that strategy, was he's going to say that it's just me and these Afrocentrists that have this opinion. But those folks you saw are not Afrocentrist. And that's what they're saying. In fact, Christopher Errett says that his skull, that his information is dated. That's what Christopher Errett says. So I want to be clear about that. By the way, he also said, why did you show that black image of Amenhotep III? This is where he's also showing you that he doesn't know what he's talking about. He actually means Mentuhotep II. <laughs> that's what he means. I let him say it. You show that image of Mentuhotep the third. You know that there are images of him being white. I'd love for him to show me images of Mentuhotep the third being white because I'm going to show you a bunch of them with him being black. But the reality is, it's not just the color. And I said this in the presentation. I'm also talking about his complex, his his uh, facial features. Just go look at the one at the Metropolitan Museum. It's a, it's a walk from here, where I am. It's another black statue with black features. So I want to be really clear that, uh, unfortunately, Chief X doesn't know what he's talking about. And sometimes, the pro have you ever heard of the Dunning-Kruger effect? Chief X thinks he knows, and he just doesn't know. He thinks he's more knowledgeable about the topic that he's not. It's one thing to recognize that there's something you don't know. It's another thing to think you know what you don't know. Right. And that is unfortunately where we are. So I want to be clear. I have actually refuted everything he said. He spent the majority of his presentation showing that the Nubians and the Kemetic people, the, the Kemetic people fighting with the Nubians, Capta, uh, the Nubians have captives. Why would you spend at least 50% of your presentation doing that and the presentation is entitled, Kemet is not black? If that's not part of the topic, then Chief X, you need to erase half of your presentation. The argument you are making, and you have said it almost explicitly, is that because the Kemetic people had enmity with the Nubians, that is, he's implying that they're not black. Don't make me lit. I can play what he said. You all heard it. You all heard it when you saw his presentation. So if we want to go there, we can. In fact, I'm going to. So we can move from there. All right, Zabari. Let me bring on Amir. Amir, what's up, man? Hey, how you doing, brother? Si? How A.K.A. Doing? and Gozi in the building. What's up? <laughs> hey, 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 how you doing, brother Jabari? Um, I'm good. I'm going to say, um, I don't, this presentation wasn't one of your best, but I do look at you as a, as a person that's high in authority. I don't mm -hmm. think that you really proved that the ancient Egyptians was black. Okay. Um, they were, I mean, the whole thing is, I'm not here to say what's what, but, and I, you said I was everywhere. I don't think I was everywhere. And I respect you as an elder and I never come at you aggressively, but I don't think I was everywhere, sir. Um, 
And Gozi, before you continue, mm -hmm. you know I've been trying to get this with you for a long time, and I don't know what's going on. Are you willing to have the one-on-one -on -one debate in the in the ring with the yes. Rock? Yes, I think on my brother. Egyptians being black or whatever. Yes, Are you willing, yes uh, I'm willing, Jabari, I'm willing to look at how about you, Jabari. Sonetta, I, we had a conversation about a possible debate. I don't have a problem debating. Okay, in okay, the I'll talk to you myself. Said, myself. Wait a minute, let me be clear about it. it. Uh, question, the problem, hold on. The problem was that he kept saying not black according to our definition today. He kept saying that. And we know very well that the Kemetic people and the Cushitic people did not have the same racialized view that we do today. That's not even a debate. That's okay. not even a debate. Well, so I, 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 if you're that. trying, let me finish. So if you're trying, so if you're trying to say that the 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 way that we view race today is not the way they view race then, then we're not even debating anything. But if you're actually saying, according to today's standard, they would not be black, then we have a debate. Then we have a debate. But you weren't yeah. doing that clearly in our conversation. So I, I, I'll say it clear right now. Um, according to the standards of what the Egyptians were, if we can use today's a category for them today, they'll be classified as MENA, Middle East, North African. So like if King Tut, if King Tut, no, no, seriously, look, hey, look, look, that look, down, look, look, Write that down, Jamari, write that down. Write that down. Let me just say this. Because that's going to be a good topic. Let write it down, this. Jabari. Let me just say this before Jabari go there. And Jabari got to, I mean, he's a teacher in this. I'm just saying, if, if King Tut was alive today, right, and we did a crime and he got locked up, King Tut may be identified as Middle East, North African. He wouldn't oh. be classified as a person, you know, like, like, like an African-American. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So my thing is, is that it be it doesn't matter what range of skin tone they have. They can, some of them are Sadnetta's color today. Some of them could be your color, Brother Jabari. They come in all color when it comes to the population in Egypt today. When you go to Aswan, the people look like people in North Sudan. When you go into Luxor, you see the Saidi people. They have my skin, my skin tone and your skin tone. When you go to the northern portion of the Delta, they look like Palestinians. But one thing that they all have in common is the consistency with their who they are, their identity, and they are Egyptian. Yes, you have admixture that occurred, but the admixture isn't recent. Mixing occurred with populations from that portion of Africa and the Levant for over 23,000 years. And you use DNA tribes who reused um, Dr. Zawi Hawass when Dr. Zawi Hawass in 2009 was studying the Egyptians' disease with pathogens. And they only used eight out of 13 STRs. So DNA tribes turned around and mimicked it and they got the same results. And it led, it led to populations in Sub-Saharan Africa. That's not a good proxy to use to describe what's what because even when Smash tried to use it and he asked the question to me, he said, how much, how much, how many um, SCRs did it take to create a, 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 a DNA profile? The FBI don't use 13 no more. They're up to 20 now, or tw up to 21. So, so, so eight out of 13, Shamaka Kata said it. The higher volume that you have with data, the algorithms can change. So that's not enough. So based off the pathogens that was used, and even with population affiliated, which is another calculator that's used to give the identity of who the ancient Egyptian was, it, 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 they only use three categories, Eurasia, East Asia, and Sub-Saharan Africa, wow. nothing for North Africa. So the problem is, is that, yes, the pathogens show based on sickle cell, malaria, it matched up with populations in Sub-Saharan Africa. Ramesses III, who had the, the 12 or 13 STRs that was used, and they gave him the Y chromosome E1B1A, that doesn't mean anything, because you have Amazigh people in North Africa that can have E1B1A. The marker is very old. E1B1A goes back 42,000 years, but it's more common in Sub-Saharan Africans because that's the layer that we are at 90%. Most of Western Central Africa is E1B1A. But at one time, it had a longer, earlier phase in the Green Sahara. So it makes sense that some of the Egyptians have E1B1A because they have a unique cluster, just like the population in the Sahel today. So what I'm trying to say is, is that we need higher resolutions. Instead of using STR tests, we need big SNPs. And if you look at the mitochondrial DNA that was found in Abu Sir, mtDNA U6, mtDNA N1, mtDNA X, mtDNA H. A lot of that was found in the Ibero Marusians in North Africa, or the Tupperware groups. The Ibero Marusian DNA was, was um, sequenced in 2018. U6 is not an African mitochondrial DNA, but we do know that the earlier Eurasians before the later adaptations or later mutation of SLC2485 were dark skinned. 
So Egypt had a large run with humans and a large population turnover. And the closest population that you find that a day that match with people, their consistency is if you're speaking of the Coptic component. The Coptic component, the population is Saudi, the people in Oswald, and they still can range the skin tone. They can still range. So it's not about skin. So I, I'm going to be quiet, but Jabari, I would love to have a conversation with you so we can go one on one, my um, big bro. Okay. Um, as long as we are able to, when you have a debate, you have to really have um, some uh, areas that are differing. And sometimes what happens when um, individuals are shifting their position, it, you don't really have a, a good debate. And I felt that that's what you were doing. I told you this. I mean, I'm not saying anything that you didn't hear from me. Um, in our conversation, that's how I felt. And I want to really say that um, as much as you look at DNA, the reality is that you still have to classify it. And when I hear you use a term like Middle East, the reality is that you are no doing nothing more than the service of the European. Can you please put this on the screen? What is Middle East? Please put it on the screen, Sonetta. I want to be clear. This is this is um, an article that describes what Middle East is. The Middle East is a flexible geographic term, flexible, by the way, that shifts depending on the user and the era. We use it throughout this text in its most inclusive definitions and refrain from assigning a definitive boundaries. Let's come here. The Middle East was originally coined in the late 19th century by the British, along with other Eurocentric geographic terms as the Near East, the Eastern Mediterranean, and uh, regions closest to Europe, and Far East. I want you to understand that what Europeans did, what the British did, is they looked at all of their holdings, all of the areas they had control of, and they described them in relation to where they were. So for you to just say what we're seeing is Middle East people, to be very honest, if you look in the wrong basket, you're going to find the wrong eggs. And I really think that what you have to recognize is that when you are identifying people and you're using antiquated, frankly, racist terms, Sonetta, can you put us all on the screen? Well, when you're using um, uh, antiquated racist terms, you're going to have challenges. And so I don't care what DNA you're using. The reality is that you have made some demarcations based on that DNA. And those, de those demarcations are racist. You're going to always have problems. And the other thing that I'm going to do is whenever you talk about these DNA studies, we're going to have to look at the studies. Because as I displayed tonight, very often the way that it's reported is very different than what the paper actually says. And I think that you should acknowledge, at least you can do this. You and I are going to continue to debate, right? But you should at least acknowledge that Chief X was not reading that right. Can you acknowledge that, please? Because this, this discussion tonight was not about you. It's about Chief X. Can you acknowledge that the source that he was using was poorly utilized? And when I read the source, it didn't say what he said. Can you acknowledge that? I don't acknowledge. I think Chief X did a good job. <laughs> and, go, and Goldie ain't going to get this home. Boy. That's what I'm saying. I'm asking you about a source. I didn't ask you whether he did a good job. I think I think I think he knew about his source. Based, based off the source that he read and based off what was found in Abu Sir, he was he made sense. It all matched with populations that's non-African today. Hey, hey, that. All right, hold but up. I want to say right, can I get a question? No, no, time out, time out. Everybody time out. Because um this gentleman here, this is his first time. I want to see what he got, what he know. I want to see, I want to just see something for a minute. Um, Nader, what's up, man? How you doing, man? Thank you, Jabari. I appreciate you, and I, I appreciate oh, you know Jabari. Okay, it's good I to see you. You know, I, I go under my pseudonym, Doctor Banub, which is my yep. my my maternal grandmother's maiden name, and it actually means belonging to Anubis, mm. which is Coptic. It doesn't mean belonging to Nubia, which Mr. Uh, Doctor Reg, who well, I don't know, he's a doctor in. Whatever, but anyway, I have a, I have a, I have a real doctor. Doctor Ray, that's our brother. Okay, yeah, yeah, but can you see my degree? 
Yes. Yeah, it's okay. in medicine. I correct? have a real degree. Wait, hold on. Let me ask. It's in medicine? Yes. Pharmacy. Okay. Yes. Yes, okay. yes. Thank you. So anyway, um, so, you know, I appreciate the knowledge and I appreciate, you know, I just want to say black people have to be very proud of their culture and their heritage. Oh. But please, 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 please do not do not take our culture away from us. We are the Coptic people. We are the ones who preserved the Coptic language, which is the only language under Egyptian. No other no other language is related to Egyptian under Afroasiatic. We we are the ones that taught we are the ones that taught Champollion Coptic, which he went and went backtracked and deciphered the hieroglyphics. It's because we kept our language alive. We were so proud of being Egyptian. Please don't steal our culture. Please. We have been persecuted for almost well, actually more than two thousand years. We've been persecuted by the Arabs. We've been persecuted by the Byzantines, who are Romans. By the Arabs, we had our tongues cut up for speaking Arabic. I'm mean, no. I'm sorry. I apologize for speaking Coptic, which is the final stage of the Egyptian language. Fortunately for us, my ancestors kept the language alive within the walls of our church and our monasteries, because otherwise our tongues would have been cut off. So please stop stealing our culture. We are a proud ethno-religious group, and by ethno-religious group, that means we do not mix. We've never, we, we, we despise mixing with foreigners. We're very proud of our culture. We're very proud of our ancestry. We find our culture and ancestry superior to any settlers that invaded Egypt or occupied Egypt. We have preserved our, our culture. We have preserved our language. We even preserved our music. The oldest musical genre on earth is the Coptic hymns, which used to be, which used to be the Coptic, I'm, I'm sorry, the Egy ancient Egyptian temple hymns. We still use it. All we did was re re use it for Christianity. We have our, 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 one of our oldest hymns is the hymn for Osiris, which now has become the hymn for Jesus. Mm. We have always preserved our culture. We are very proud of our culture. Were the we, love, we love everybody, but please, please, were I beg you, please stop. Were the stop, Egyptians stop, black? Stop. I, no wait, Senator, please. Let me let me let me interact with him, please. No, okay. I want to ask him, Jabari. That's, that's not a question that he's he's gonna. That's not a. That's you not don't a, know until I ask him. Was the I heard Egyptians what you asked? I heard what you asked. Were the Egyptians black, sir? Oh. No, sir. Okay, we're not black. You I don't know why. You know why? I, I'm just gonna tell you. We love our black neighbors. We love Nubians. Nubians are the greatest people, the kindest people. But Nubians are different. For, uh, they have their own culture, and they're proud of their culture, and so should they be proud of their culture. But their language and culture is different from Egyptian culture. But, but most of all, but most of all, but most of all, we are not, we have, we don't identify as Black. You know why? Because Black people identify by tribes. Egyptians never identified by tribes. And so did other North Africans, like Berbers. They identified by tribes. We're very proud and unique that we have never identified by tribes. We don't have any tribal affiliation. Not that it matters, tribe, you know, tribal affiliation is cool. But that's just unique. We are unique. Sound just like the Greeks. Greeks didn't have what, tribes. What nationality he is again? Oh, he said. Hold on. Sound I'm sorry? That's why I said your question was not one that would yield a good um, discussion. But I want to say to you, First of all, Africans don't um, identify themselves by tribe. The term yes, they tribe, do. Hold Look on, it up. Hold on. Hold on. The term oh. tribe. The term tribe is a Western term that actually was applied to Africans. The term that is more appropriate is peoples. Just like you're saying, you're Coptics. People could say they're Igbo. There's no difference in what you're saying 
than to what other Africans are saying. The only problem is that you have heard the term tribes, which is not a term that um, that originated in, on the continent of Africa. And you are- said that You said they identify by tribes. The Africans do, yes they do. We don't have, we have no tribes. Okay. Name one, name one, name one Coptic can Egyptian can tribe. I, can I say this Please. to you? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. First of all, do you consider yourself an African? No, I don't. I do. So you're now telling me about myself. So don't tell me that we... Don't tell me we, about myself. We, we, don't identify as African. we don't identify by tribes. No, we don't. Yes, you do. So, so, so let me say to you something else. First of all, you said that your name refers to Anubis. Anubis is a Greek word. No, I know that. It's Anpu. Oh. So that is the Arabicized word. Uh, it means uh, look at Anu with a P. Listen, I listen to you speak. So if I we're know, don't do, don't, if don't, we're going to have a dialogue, if we're going to have a dialogue, you have yeah, to. Yeah, I know that. I You're trying to play games with me. It I know that. You. Nader, 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 stop. I listen to you quietly. I listen to you quietly. So now you have to, if we're going to have a respectful conversation, now you have to listen. Will you agree to do that? Yes, Because if not, then this isn't going to work. Yes, sir. I respect you. Did you okay. go to Cornell or Columbia? Okay. I went to Cornell. Okay. Uh, I went to USC. Okay. Good. So um, let me say, and Cornell is just one of the schools I attended. I attended several schools. Good for so, you. So um, I want you to understand that um, when we're talking about ancient Africa, I will clearly say to you that some groups on the continent have an admixture of some people from outside of Africa and some people within Africa. So what I would love for you to do for us to have a fuller conversation is I would love to see your DNA analysis. Um, have you done one? No, I haven't. I don't okay. need to prove it to anybody. Okay. No, I'm not, uh, listen. My culture goes back thousands of years. Listen. I don't need to prove it to anybody, including listen. myself. Okay, okay. But, but when you speak like that, it sounds like fanaticism because the reality it's okay. is. Yes, I'm not part of being a Coptic. Yes. Nader, you have to stop. Why? I listened to you. I did not interrupt you. Okay, but you're asking me a question. What, uh, that and, I and you answered the question. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. You answered the question. That isn't, you just don't get to talk forever. So, what I'm saying like to you, you is. In a minute, I'm going to ask you to leave. <laughs> okay, sir, go ahead. So, as we have this dialogue, we're all trying to reach back three to 5,000 years. And the knowledge that we have about ourselves may not be well based because the detail that we're looking for is so aged. And so in order for us to have a fuller conversation, I would love for you to be able to give us some analysis of what you are saying. If you're making a comment, this is in this environment, when you make a, a comment, you have to back it with something. So you can't just say, I don't need to prove it to anyone because then you're in the wrong conversation. Then you would need to go to the neighborhood bar and have that kind of conversation. But in a scholarly environment, if you are going to come in here and make a claim, it must be backed by some sources. Jabari, Jabari, why are you not telling him that those are not his ancestors? Because the reality is this, son, Edder, listen to what I'm saying. And I said this in the beginning. They yeah. may be. They may be. When I look at that guy right there, he has African ancestry. <laughs> North Africa. But he won't do we any DNA. Listen, but he won't do any DNA study. So that's why I asked him about it. And I knew he was going to say no. I knew that he said he hadn't done it. You. Because the reality is, all of us have admixtures. If you go to my, and I said this during my presentation, we don't if you go to so my fifth no. great grandfather, you don't know my culture. He's going to look radical. You don't know my culture. He's going to look radical. Don't know my culture. He's going right, to look right, radically right. different than I do because I have other DNA within me. 
And so what I'm what I want him to do in order to have a fuller conversation is a DNA analysis so we can really have a conversation. That is how we'd be able to have a better um a uh, uh, based conversation. But that's just the reality. If he's not willing to do that, it's hard for us to um to prove any points or to make any cases because we one just of us believe what he says is using sources and the other one is using belief. So if that's where we are, there's almost no room for what he's talking about. And he's saying that I don't know Coptic culture. Well, I would argue to you that you probably know Coptic culture better than I do, but I know Kemetic culture better than you do. Oh. And Coptic oh. culture and Kemetic culture is radically different. It's hey, hold radically on. Hold different. Hold on one minute. Time out. Everybody time out. Um, Natter, Natter. Is it possible if I could get an interview with you? Natter? Wait, uh, let me unmute you. Yes. I think you said okay. Natter, do you see the private chat right here? Look at I the do. private I, I need you to put your number there so I can give you a call. What city are you in? Where you at? San Diego, California. Okay, put your number in the chat. So um, I mean in the um, did I do it? In, in the, the private chat. chat. In the private Where's chat here. Yes, the private chat. One says private, one says comments. Private? No, no, one says hey, private. Listen, no, listen, listen. With everyone. Sorry. Wait, wait, listen, listen. Make sure you put it in the private chat, not I'm trying. I don't know. This is needed me. Sorry. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Listen, listen. When you yes. look at the side of the screen that we're on, yes. you'll see that there's a chat area, right? On the left, it says private chat. On the right, it says comments. Mm, if, you private put it chat. The, if you put it in the private chat, the only people who will see your number are the people that are on the screen or that come into the private area, not, okay. at, not a sir, thousand let, people on YouTube. Sir, I, I'm looking. I'm seeing, okay, microphone, cam. Chat more and you leave. go all the way to the right. Go to the right. It says, do you, see where the, do you see where the comments are coming up? No, I don't. That means you're probably <laughs> in the private chat. Look, I'm gonna I'm gonna write you a message. He's on his phone, it might not be there. Let me, let me. Are you on your phone or on a computer? I'm on my iPhone. Yes, oh, it's iPhone. available when you're on the cell phone. So maybe you might not see it. Okay, so here's the deal, Nader. Yes. And listen, I want to have a respectful conversation with you. I don't, I'm not, I, I don't want to, okay. So what right. I hey, do... hold on, hold on, hold on, Jabari, hold on, Jabari. Um, Nader, Nader, yes, you hear me? Yes, I can hear. I'm gonna put my number in the chat. My okay. number is in the chat. I'm putting it in there. The chat. Write my number down. It's gonna be in the chat. I'm gonna look. Sorry. Two. All right, you see my number right there. I'm gonna put it on. <laughs> Comments. Okay, let me see. If you say it, you could even just speak it out loud because it's in with everybody. Oh, there it is on the screen, too. Okay. Write that um, number down. Don't put number. Join the chat. Okay, let me hit join the chat. Connect. No, it's right there on the screen. You ain't had to do that. It's on the screen, too. Can you see you put it on the screen, Nader? Uh Nader went out. Yeah, I think that'll be an interesting interview. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I think that you are Sonetta, Sonetta, I know a lot of people. I've been traveling to Kemet for uh -huh. over twenty years. Right. That's why I said the question you're going to ask is not going to yield that much because I've had these conversations before. Uh -huh. For you, this is novel. For me, it is not. All right. So you, you have to ask certain them. questions. You have to ask certain questions. You notice how I asked him about DNA, and he said he wouldn't do it. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's a question. He that something. He was running from you, Jabbar. The reality is, that's why I didn't. You said, why are you telling me those aren't his ancestors? Because they may be. Mm. The reality is that some of the people that are there now are admixtures like everybody else. And he kept saying no. Yes, because he doesn't know. Yeah, he's saying no, they're not admixtures. Because he doesn't know. Do a DNA test. When he does a DNA test and he sees African DNA, it's gonna be really interesting. Hey, we oh, gotta hey, be, we gotta be careful though, uh, brother Jabari, because they, if, if Sadnada can go right now, and anybody can go, there are Egyptians that took DNA tests from Twenty Three and Me, and they have their own segment. It says North African. So if he took a DNA test, he, it may say ninety eight percent North African. He says he's North African, but we'll have to say he says he's North African because he comes from Egypt, Sadnada. That's not a yeah, Sonetta, 
but all cops don't think right. Like that. But some I'm just cops, going some, by some what, cops what, what, saying. what I'm saying to you, of course, not all cops think that way. Um, um, uh, Ngozi, I know that I have been speaking with people in Kemet for over 20 years. I know that I spoke with people in Kemet today who are cops, had nothing to do with this thing with Sonnetter. I they're just my peoples. So right. the reality is that um, the, the, we need more information to have a stronger conversation. And the reality is the other part that I want him to acknowledge is that the cops were very damaging to ancient comedic um, culture. The way the cops describe themselves today, they make it sound like they are the caretakers. Oh. But the reality is if he followed me, in those temples, he would see something different. Mm. Um, I doubt he's been in them. That's the challenge. So I, I think that because of my experience dealing with people from the region, I might have a different kind of, um, of conversation with him. Let me okay. show you an image. I'm going to show you an image so you know, so you understand what I'm saying, right? Because I've done it before, but I don't know if everyone knows what I'm referring to. So I, I really. I, I think that what we're trying to do is we're trying to have a conversation that pins people down a little bit. Not, when you're really general, it's helpful when you do scattershot because you're trying to become more specific. But I've had enough conversations with the people who consider themselves the cops that I can already do that. So mm -hmm. that's what I'm referring to. Um, and I agree that there's some people that, uh, depending on what he does, some of the DNA may just say North African. What does that mean exactly? Um, so, so we're going to have to do some analysis in order to understand what that means. Because remember, DNA is DNA, but the, the, dis the distinction of what is North African and others, I mean, that's different. Those are political analyses. Mm. The world itself doesn't divide itself according to those names. So how are you defining what we're referring to? This is important. And that's the reason why I, I took issue with you using the word um, Middle Eastern. Take a look at this for a quick second. Ben, I mean, I was going to say, Jabari, I'll wait, I'll wait. Look at this for a second. Those are Coptic crosses. Mm. This, this damage of Ost, we know who did that because there's writing there. I don't like preserving so it to me. They are the caretakers. Right. Why did they try to rub out what huh. is theirs? Now, is it possible they did? It's possible. But you need to have a bigger, broader conversation to see that. Because you'll also see, if you go to West Africa, you'll see West Africans who are Islamic that are trying to destroy African culture. So I'm not saying just because they destroyed this, it doesn't mean that they're them. But their ideology changed, and it likely changed because there was an influx of other people that are actually present in their DNA. They became more prevalent than others. And that's the analysis. I, you know, when I was a young person, I used to say, I used to make an argument like all the comedic people left and these new people came in. That's not realistic. I'm not saying that everyone in Kemet left. Some did, but not everybody left. Large sections of people from outside came in and intermixed. That's what happened. So that's why I'm not going to look at him and say, those aren't your ancestors. They may be. But we're talking about something different when we're talking about phenotype. And he is the one that's saying that they weren't black because he wants them to look exactly like he does. When he looks at his DNA, he may some see something very different. So. All right. So with that, let me bring on Heru. Heru, what's up, brother? You want to say something? Yes, sir. Uh, what's up, Sidero? Peace, sir. Peace, peace, Jabari. Peace, brother. I saw you call me today. I was in the middle of a class. I couldn't. Uh, yeah. So one thing I want to say is, um, Sinetta, I think y'all let y'all let Unc slide yesterday with that that interpretation of comprehension and reading. No, 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 no. You let him slide because you didn't come in. <laughs> you didn't. Was, hey, listen, listen, listen. I couldn't get to him. But I think, and then Chief X jumped out the window with him uh. on that. And, um, you know what I'm saying? Because when he was trying to explain the latter, I don't think he understood when, when, um, said, when he said 
context, he ignored it, completely ignored the context of what the symposium about and what the actual first reading was. It wasn't Sheikh Anta Diop. He was responding to the reading. So Sheikh mm. Anta Diop would have been the latter, not him being the farmer. Oh, wow. So you should have came in. That was important, man. On that. You should have came in. And then later he said it. He said, oh, uh, they read it as black land. That was the first reading. So that was the first thing. And, and, and uh, Chief X, I thought he was going to at least hold him honest to it, but he jumped out the window too. But based on what was going on tonight, though, the, my question, one, is that Chief X is using a lot of his logos. He's using a lot of appeal to logic. He's not really showing any primaries. He's talking about things that have absolutely nothing to do with one another except for reasoning by talking about, you know, uh, Europeans coming into West Africa, but they didn't change. But then what about in North Africa? Um, when they're talk talking about the, being a Mediterranean uh, culture, when it's a now Valley civilization, now Valley culture, right? How do they get past? And this is, I would like Jabari or even in Gozi can explain this. How do they get past the, the iconography? How do they get past the primary accounts of, of, of the phenotype of what um, the, the Greeks and other historians have said when, when they're talking about a migration that's coming from the West Desert, right? And we know it wasn't just like they were flooding in. These are small people coming in, very small, as if the, the population along the Nile just disappeared. And these new people well, came down. Well, how, he, do they, how do they get how do they get away or how do they explain that away? You know what he does? And part of this is that he doesn't really know what he's looking at, right? That's the reason why he even said to me, Why are you showing images of Amenhotep the third? Um, knowing that there are other images of him looking white. And the reality is. I did show an image of Amenhotep III, but this is the image I showed of Amenhotep III. I showed, if you're confused, you're going to be confused, right? You, ha you have to have more information to be able to really swing in this conversation. And he doesn't, he got frustrated. He doesn't have enough information to be able to, to really get into the, to the conversation. Um, uh, um, this is the image I showed. Wow, man, where is it? Here it is. Did I at ever po any point give the impression based on these images that a minute that a minute the third? Why is it not coming in? I'm seeing it on my screen. Is it just black on your son, Edder? It's black. Let me reshare. Go ahead. Yeah. This is the image I showed of Amenhotep III, but you have to know more about ancient Kemet to be able to make that analysis. Did I make an argument that based on the way these statues look, that he's an African? By the way, I could do that because Amenhotep III is always depicted with African features, but that wasn't the argument I was making tonight. Um, what he was referring to was when I showed an image of Mentuhotep, the second, sometimes called Mentuhotep the first, by the way. That's what he's referring to. But because he's not aware of, um, uh, of, the, of the kings that he's referring to, he thinks that it's all the same. Here goes the image of Mentuhotep the third. Let's see if I can, I don't think I can just switch it like that. Let me stop sharing and reshare. Question about hey, that. Jabari, can I can I ask yeah. you a question, Jabari? Uh, absolutely, but give me a minute. I don't have a problem with you asking a question, but give me a minute. Um, let me show this one. I showed several different images, but this is the one I'll show right now. I showed one that had the four different kings. Um, ending the show at two o'clock. And yeah, I cannot even believe that we're at two o'clock, Sonetta. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Here's the image of a of, of Mentehotep the first. Look at this. And he said, 
Why are you lying to the people? You know that there are pictures of him looking white. I want him to show what he's referring to. See, he doesn't even know the kings well enough to make that analysis. And I'm not talking about the just the color of his skin. Look at his features. So, you know, the reality is that he has a passing understanding of this information, and he thinks that he can actually tangle with someone who has more than a passing understanding. Well, if you're going to do that, you got to bulk up. Get back to the gin, my friend, um, because it doesn't it doesn't work that way. All it right. does not work that way. Let By the way, here's the image. Let me show this really quickly, Sonetta. I just want to make the point really quickly. I'm trying to do it quickly. I know we, we're running short on time. I cannot believe I'm still awake. I have to get up early. Um, You're done, then. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe I'm doing this. But Well, you got, um, you got class tomorrow, right? No, I don't have a class tomorrow. I have meetings tomorrow. Oh, okay. Here goes. Um, now, this one, it's a little harder to see the paint on this. But my point was not really about paint either. Come on, where are you at? Can you see that? Can you see that, Sonetta? Yes, sir. It's up there. The Metropolitan Museum. There's still black paint on here, but the paint is not as clear. I, look at his features, Sonetta. Mm -hmm. Look at his features. I'm not talking about just paint. I'm not saying paint is unimportant, but... I'm talking about more than paint. This is the way he depicts himself. And I would love for him to show me an image where he looks white. The reason why he said this is because he doesn't know the kings that he's talking about. So, I mean, he's he's just not equipped. Right. Hey, Dr. Reggie, I'm getting ready to leave now, brother. It's almost two o'clock. Let me let um, Barry his question. Peace, brother. Um, Reggie, close out. I know Reggie just came in. Amir. Oh uh, yeah, brother, brother, um, Jabari, Doctor Jabari, I wanted to ask you. So, um, you do know that there are pictures of Alexander the, the Alexander the Greek, how they made him look in Egypt, right? You ever seen that picture where he looks like an Egyptian citizen? He's he's depicted as having dark skin, and wearing um, Egyptian attire. Um, I I think that what we can clearly see that he's being depicted to look like one of the people. He actually also has um horns, ram's oh. horns in that image. But there are a multiplicity of, of very clear images of what he looks like. The, you're talking Absolutely. about the exception. it's clearly the exception to the rule. You don't want one image? Yeah, I, I, of, no, I'm just doing it. And also, it's this a depiction of, of, of Cleopatra, and it makes her look a certain way, too. I mean, I'm just trying to say, like, we can't. Cleopatra, just, Cleopatra she was, was like. Greek. She was a Cleopatra, Greek woman. Yes. Cleopatra, Cleopatra was likely a person of mixed parentage. I don't think that she would have, if we saw her today, we probably would not have said she's a white lady. She's a Mediterranean European, like a woman from Greece or Italy. We probably would have looked at her and thought, if you looked at her, you would have said, there's something going on in there, other than just um, than Europe in her loins. And that's because, remember, her family had been in Kemet for 300 years by the time she comes to, to rule. But the Greeks, so, practice, the Greeks practice incest, didn't they, Jabari? She's not the best. She's not the best um, example of African... Um, Kemet. That's why I wouldn't even argue her. But okay. it is likely it is likely that she also has African DNA as well. All right, thank you. Why, why, why do I make this case? Because we have scans of her sister Arsenal's skull, and the people that I scanned it—they found it in Turkey. They found it in has, Turkey. I know. They say she has Bantu features. All That's right, thank y'all, thank y'all, man, Reggie, <laughs> Reggie. Let's go, Reggie. Um. So it's very, very clear that when Jabari Asase uh, talks. And he sources material. Um, Chief X sources are disputable. Uh, Jabari Asase sources are pretty much direct. Uh, so the question is: is uh, what sources is Chief X using besides all of his talk? Now, when we actually do the work, we look at journals. We actually look at those who are digging. The problem is, is how uh, Chief X is characterizing uh, ancient Egypt. He's characterizing ancient Egypt from not its origins, right? 
but from a uh, from other periods. That's what he calls ancient Egypt. Whereas uh, Brother Jabari is obviously talking about the pre-dynastic to the dynastic phase. He says that Norma was from Tennis. What source, what inscription does he have when he says that? That is conjecture. We don't know exactly where Norma is from. Um, what inscription is he using? So if he is talking about Tennis or he's talking about uh, Abydos or El Cobb or Neckham or any of those, those are the origin sites of ancient Egypt that began after the Nakata one, two, and three period, right? If you want to talk about who these people are, please talk about the origin. So I know it's late, right? Are we going to, uh, I don't think Jabari, brother Jabari, you know, um, I don't know how to continue after you given so much information. And Chief X says, well, we didn't answer his question. If he wants to use the Schunemann report, we've done numerous shows showing uh, me, Smash, and others about the pop affiliator, right? About how you determine what are the tools that you use, right? To to to, and you take the data that Hawass gave and you plug it in into other data, and you find out that there is Nubians everywhere. He refuses to understand that the civilization, even before Nakata, right? We're talking from 5,000 BC, right? The Bedarian culture is full of Nubians. And that is further north than the, the uh, than Abydos, right? And so the Bedarian, so all they did was they found a settlement uh, more southern, and then they formed Egypt. It came from the Western Desert. It came from Nubia, it came from Sudan, it came from the places called Sub-Saharan. So uh, we will further have these conversations, but until this dude writes something, put something in writing, an abstract, so we can follow exactly what he says, not as changing opinions, uh, I don't know where we can go, Brother Jabari. I, I don't know. So hey, I don't hey, Reggie, let me ask you this question in closing, man. Um, what did you think about the up and coming future debate between Ngozi and Brother Jabari, brother. Well, um, I, um, do you think Ngozi have a chance, brother? Um, I think that. Well, first of all, um, I think that's going to come down to sources, and those sources have to be archaeological sources. The DNA sources, the genome sources are, 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 are fuzzy at best, right? So if it comes down to history, right, the known history, the inscriptions, Jabari uh, will win, right? Um, and Gozi is very good with talking about haplogroups and things like that. No doubt about it. You but think he's out of his lane on this one? You're saying. The Schumann report destroys a lot because a lot of people hung their hat on that. So then, so, so then we need direct sources from my brother Ngozi, right? We need presentations, PowerPoint. We need slides. We need sources. Jabari is going to give him that work with <laughs> sources. <laughs> Right? Because, because the archaeology. So if, if I say, if I say Nekum and I say El Cobb, I say Aswan, right? <laughs> I say those things. First of all, Jabari has been there a, a, more times than people can count, right? When people haven't been to the place, right? So one thing is going to the place, and he's been to the place way, I mean, I've only been in place one time. He's been, he's been a lifetime at the place. When you're talking theoretical, it's different. We can look at the 1920 photos of Egypt, right? All we got to do is pull up the 1920 videos of Egypt, the 1940s, when it was still, before it was modern Egypt as we know, 
right? Before they started selling tourism. We see the majority of the people in the South black. Black. What the modern Egypt that people are looking at? No, that's a new Egypt. All I'm right, a, Dr. Reggie, thank you. Can, wait, wait, can, wait, I, can I say something? I gotta say something to Reg. Wait, did you see the Dro Drovetti drawing? No. I might that's step what, away. I, 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 that's no, what you are no, no, no more. We got to go. Hey, Jabari. Uh, wait a minute. Can I say say five seconds? Hold, can I say on, five seconds? Yeah, hold on. I want Amir to close out and then Jabari take us home. Go okay. ahead, Amir. Hey, Reggie, you know the it ain't just about, it's Jabari. not just about genetics. It's about anthropology. And I'm aware of the Nakata. Jabari, you heard me? Come, I'm, I'm aware of Come the Nakata. Jabari, did you hear me? Yes, I did. I did. I did. What I said. You said, hold on, I can show it after he goes and then- I said, you can show it in your closing. Go ahead. Um, right. I just want to say this five seconds. Brother Reggie, I'm aware, it's just not genetics. It's also about anthropology. So what I'm trying to say is it's just not about the Nakata who comes from the Badarians and the Badarians who come from the Tasians. We can look at the anthropology and the skulls and see. And, and, and that's what I'm going to stick with. I'm going to stick with science. I, it, I don't deny that the Egyptians are Africans. They're completely Africans. And they still range in phenotype today in that country like they always did. My thing is, is I'm trying to prove a point to show that the people that's there now are the descendants of the people that's responsible for the civilization. And the people that that's, that's there now are more closer to the ancient Egyptians than the person who descend from Western Central Africa. That's my conclusion. And that's what I'm saying. But, uh, you uh, see, I'm here. I'm here. And Gozi, the people that's there now or um, they have so many mixtures that they don't they can't even put it in a pop affiliator. They, they are mixed with the Momox. They're mixed I, with the Persians. They're mixed with the Greeks. They're mixed with the Romans. Can I say something, Reggie? And 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 let me say, let me say, Reggie, that's exactly what I'm trying to say. We mix but too. The we mix with British. We mix with Irish. We mix with Native. The people who are doing this, they are doing something lazy and in fact racist. They have created a whole new group they call Middle Eastern North African. What is that? It's an admixture. All right, close out. Close you know out. Jabari, you got to close this. Okay, I'm closing. I'm on, closing. Let me say this. By the way, most people who look at Namar don't say that he's from Thinnis. Most people would say, and this is what Reggie's trying to say, most people say he's probably from Nekin, right? But the reality is that so much of this is, is problematic because there are a bunch of folks that are um, that are, haven't done a, as much study for as long. And if we're going to talk about anthropology, I want you to look at what Sonia Zarowski says, because she's the one that's looking at dimensions of body type. She actually used the term super negroid. I still think the term is inappropriate, but you understand what she's trying to say. So you're going to use anthropology? You're listen, I'm ready for you, but the reality is this also. And Ngozi just even just then said something that was kind of slippery. Oh, yeah, they're Africans, they've always been there, and they're more related to the ancient um Kemetic people than people from Western Central Africa. That may or may not be true, but the reality is this is the reason why when you asked me if I was going to tell um do Dr. Banub. What, that those weren't his ancestors, I said, they may be. They may be. He may have a small amount of DNA that comes from the people that are there. But phenotypically, he looks very different because of the admixtures. There's, a, there's probably a small percentage of those ancient people that are in his DNA. And the rest of it come from all over the region. So that's what I'm saying. We have to, this is a more complex argument than um, some of us are willing to make. And when I hear Ngozi, like he, he like says one thing and he says something else, he says, I mean, sometimes it's so slippery that there's no, there's no there there. There's no, there's no um, means to debate in that instance. So that's, that's the challenge. Now, let me say to you folks, I'm hoping that you are going to send me your emails contact me because if you want to go to these sites, you can come with me. By the way, I'm also going to be doing a tour of the Metropolitan Museum with my students from Hunter. I'm going to be doing a tour for them on the first, on um, March 3rd, Sunday, March 3rd, Sunday, March 3rd, 
at 1 p.m. Be prepared because when we start announcing it and, and there's a payment um, link, then you're going to need to just go. But I'm telling you as a, as a save the date, you can come and you'll actually. How many people are you questions. allowed to bring, Jabari? I, I never pay attention to that. Yeah, <laughs> and Reggie went. We had a nice group, and I think it was too many, right, Reggie? Was it? I, I've had I've had really large groups, and I've had small groups. You know how it is. Sometimes you could have ten people. Sometimes you got fifty people. The okay. reality is that it kind of depends. You know, it depends on yeah. on the size of the of of the group. I've taken I've taken fifteen people to Kemet. I've taken two hundred people to Kemet. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I don't I don't listen to the museum in terms of size anymore um, because I was the only one doing it. Right, Reg? I was the only one doing it. So I was mm -hmm. like, I just go. And if I have an issue, I work it out. So, you know, that's that's how that's how we'll handle it. Yeah, oh, right, you work back. it out now. Thank you, Thank you uh, brother Reggie. I was there. Reggie, I was there with uh, 40 people in maybe 45 people in. Uh, oh, goodness. It must have been November. No one bothered me. Students, mostly students. students. Mostly yeah. students. Mostly, mostly students, right? Hey, um, I'll be with you on the next one with the students, Jabari. That'd be great. But the reality is, they don't treat us well. I'm sure Reggie has not been treated well by the museum. Either. They don't treat us well, well. They don't. They know me, but they know me, but uh, we can't cross. We do. We take. We can't definitely do anything wrong. And then all the people, you know, when you have people coming on your on a group that you don't know that you're meeting on the group. That that bothers me because that 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 chills me because people there saying stupid things like it yeah. should be in Africa, it should be in Egypt, yeah. right? And and it chills me because of our behavior, our, be our, our behavior. Right, so, right, right. Another right. great show, Sanetta. Um, yeah, you know, good, great show, Jabari. Great show. The people love it. Thank you, brother Reggie. Um, thank you, my and brother. Peace, Jabari. peace, Sufi. I, you know, you my brother. I love you. Um, this this is. I don't know if you've had a debate. What do you think about that guy that came in, Reggie? Which one? Uh, what's his name, Jabari? Um, oh, the but Dr. Banub. He's still there. Oh, yeah. the Mexican. He's he very, he, he, <laughs> Reggie said Mexican. You know, yeah, listen. He, he actually said Reggie and Jabari, not doctors like me. Yeah, yeah but you know, doctor in another field. Have a doc Wait a minute. He has a doctor of pharmacy. Yeah, you can't tout that here. He don't speak no Coptic, Jabari. You, you are Coptic. a doctor of pharmacy, yeah, sir. Reggie, he know you. He he watch you, Reggie. Yeah, he, he knows me. He, he knows me. Way, we don't like each other. You don't know what my my credentials are. You have no idea what my credentials are. So I, I think that you need to 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 slow your roll because you're going to embarrass yourself. All right. Only here can he get a voice. Jabari, where he at? Huh? You say he's still here? He's still in the chat. I'm seeing Dr. Yeah, Bundu is what his he's name is. Patty Patty. Yeah, he's he still take there. care of the man. That hey, he's... why he run when I told him the number? I hope he got the number. So I, don't, can... I don't think he meant to run. I think that he, he doesn't want to do what I'm asking him to do, but he wants to talk. Um, and yeah. the reality is, I didn't even say to him, that's not your culture. Because he may have some small DNA that comes from ancient Kemet. He doesn't know, look right? like anybody from Coptic. He doesn't know how to speak Coptic. He can't write his name in Coptic. But I asked him, why do you write in Coptic? Hey, you crazy. <laughs> he doesn't even know that the noob in his name might be gold, right? Instead, he thinks it's Anubis. It means right. one, one that is with uh, Anubis, right? right? How could you make a Banu um, a, a one with Anubis? And it with that, Anubis. brothers, we out of here. Peace. I got to go. It seemed like everybody watched the House of Consciousness. Of God, I'm tuning in here in the States to every content. Oh, wow. You got your holy book, your references and documents, then hit your brother's side and get it cracking if you're confident. Sign at the TV, it don't get no more reality. Nah. It's helping us stay mindful of the struggle in totality. Humble yourself and let the commentary resonate. Living in these times, this here is sure to help you. Yeah, Hope the dialogue ain't too strong. Y'all know that we've been waiting too long. And ever since I stepped into this paradigm, it's the time all I got is built. I know the TV is a black throne. Where kings and queens come get their facts on. Just be prepared to have your mind blown. And ever since I stepped into this paradigm, most of the time all I got is freedom on my mind. For real. Can you dig it?